Hey everyone, welcome to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Royalty Honey. And on today's episode, we have Cass. Cass, right. welcome to Indicted TV. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, um, how the inside of your house was, brothers, sisters. Uh, well, I grew up in HGV area, back and forth from Alhambra to El Monte. Okay. And uh, household, I was kind of bouncing around a lot. As a, as a like a. As a youngin. Like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, maybe not that young, but I'm saying maybe. I remember living in Alhambra, being young, and then visiting a uh, 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 aunt of mine on my dad's side and always just back and forth from got my it. mother to my aunt's house. Got it, got it, So got it. it was like, you know, a lot of moving around, even at a young age. Okay, so never really felt stable. Mm -mm. Okay, do you have brothers, sisters? I have one older sister, she's three years older than me. Oh, so she was always with you, I'm sure. No. No. No, we were kind of separated. Oh, no. Yeah, back and forth like that growing up. Okay. But we had our moments, a couple years here, maybe we stayed together. Okay. Yeah. Um, Real young, I, I'm sure we were, tough, you know, tight. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you, like, did you go to elementary? Did you go to junior high? I went to, yeah, I went to school all the way up to maybe in a solid up to at least ninth grade. That's okay. when it started falling off. Ah, so that was But growing up, yeah, in Alhambra, I went to elementary schools in Alhambra and then back and forth from Alhambra, we moved to El Monte. I remember going to school, uh, what was the school called? Wilkerson, I think it was called. I must have been like in third grade. Then I went to Baker, I believe it was called like in fourth grade. And then, yeah, then back and forth from there. Yeah, so yeah, the elementary thing was still back and forth. Back and forth. Up to high school, I think in high school, ninth grade, my first high school was a, a new school that had opened. It was South Del Monte High School. Okay. Yep. Um, do you feel, because that's what you said, you started in ninth grade is when um, you started to change or is that, or did you always kind of get into trouble? Were you a vago growing up or it just started from the ninth grade? Uh, it was a little sooner than that. A little sooner than that. Maybe junior high started being out there, but nothing gang related, just being out on the streets. Okay. Sneaking out, just hanging creeping out, out with just the fellas. Just hanging out with friends. Yeah, getting Got into it. a little mischief on the streets. And uh, um, even in the beginning, I want to say, of ninth grade, around that era, it, everything was still kind of cool. But, yeah, the streets were kind of already calling. Okay. You, you knew it was your call. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yep. Do you feel um, that you not being stable as being a child had a, had anything to do with you, you know, moving around wild? Not back then, but thinking about it now, yeah. Okay. At that time, I wasn't one of those kids that, oh, why don't, why isn't my dad around, or why am I not stable? I was just too busy going, Got you know, it. just living. Got That's it. That's it. I had a lot of fun memories at, at living with my aunt on my father's side. She always took me in. That family was like my, you know, like my other sisters and brothers. She had, she had three girls and one boy of her own. For the most part, single mother, you know, always gone. So, you know, we yeah. were always on our own program, mm -hmm. getting away with stuff we probably shouldn't have. But um, yeah, from there, that's when uh, I could tell that it was just, I didn't think about it, you know, just running around. Our apartments were real big, and we had a few around us. It was a lot of kids. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. And back in the days, we, were, we would go outside and play mm -hmm. with our friends, you know, yep. not just... Trees, roofs, tops, you know, out in the wild. It was, yeah, it was a good time. Nice. Good. Tell me about your first time getting in trouble with the law. First time getting in trouble with the law, I want to say I was in, I was, I know I was about 12 years old. I got arrested for a G-ride. We were, I was, that's when started hanging around the wrong little group. And uh, at the time, you don't know that though, right? You just, everyone's there. 
and you know spending the night at a little homie's pad and then from there it's like there's no really no parental guidance mm -hmm. and we were just out there on the streets one of the fellas was a little older he was into that so we got into it and so there we go cars. thinking that we did you know breaking in trying to and finally after a couple of attempts we finally did what we were trying to do and that's the first time I got arrested. Oh, so your first time trying to steal the car is the first time you got arrested? Yes. Dang, you didn't, you weren't able to get away with anything, huh? Mm -mm, not at that time. <laughs> oh, not at that time. No. And how was that experience for you, you being it so It was young? quick, it was quick. It's just, I got arrested, we went to the station, I was there till the morning. Okay, so my, nothing crazy. Yeah, my moms came and picked me up. I actually thought I was gonna get my ass beat, but uh, nah, she actually, I remember walking home with her from the station thinking like, I'm about to catch one, trying to watch her hands, everything. But um, now nah, she actually asked me, was it because of my father being absent in my life? And I'm sorry, mom, I love you. I said, yes, but honestly, it wasn't. You know, it, honestly, I didn't have, I didn't think of it like that. You know, I see some kids, they talk about stuff like that and, they're depressed or something. I just didn't, I feel like I didn't even have time to worry about that. I was just too busy moving, you know? Just having, like I said, being a kid. My, wow. my situation, I didn't, you start seeing kids in better situations, yeah, that part you think about, but what, I was already born into that situation, yeah. so it I would, didn't know any other way. Mm -hmm, that's what I was about You know, to so say. it was like, it's not like I had a dad and then he was gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it, it really wasn't nothing. You were just yeah. having fun. Yeah. According to you. Yeah. So, you know, I just went home, got in trouble. It was, I guess I was grounded for a while. And then that was it from there. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was grounded. You probably weren't even grounded, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not really. I don't remember being like too bad. No. So, you know, I got away with that one. The first one. Mm hmm. Yeah. How many, did you, how many times did you get arrested as a juvenile? A juvenile, I went through the act of that. You know, I started going through the system, through okay. the halls. Okay, I went through uh, the halls. What, what made you go back? Because the first time, obviously, the GTA didn't get you to juvenile hall. Mm -mm. So what, obviously, uh, you were... That was, that was, that was like, I want to say, after that, it was kind of mellow for a minute, till maybe about 14. Okay. And uh, my sister and her husband, her husband's from Compton, and uh, they lived together, and my sister started taking me in. At that time, I started bouncing around. More. You know, I'm, I want to, I, I, sometimes I think back and I wonder, but, you know, I don't think anybody at that time could really stop me from doing what I oh, was no. doing, you know? Um, so I was bouncing around a lot from my, my aunt's house to my sister's at that time. I can't really tell you around that era. I think my mother, she was going through a lot of, on, on her own, so. I was living with my sister and my aunt back and forth. And sometimes I'd just be out on the streets and pull up and my sister would leave the balcony open for me or something. Aww. And I'd creep in. Same thing at my aunt's, my cousin's. Just, just in case you wanted to come home. And I would just go in there and knock out and wake up in the morning and then figure it out from there. But around that time, they had, they had a, um, my, my cuñado, he had one of his little homies living with them. And uh, I think yeah, he's been on, I don't know, he was on the news when he was a youngster. His name was Little Midget from T-Flats. Oh, I think I've seen him. Like, they have like a YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that was my little crimey at that time, and we lived together. And I'm telling you, I was 14. This dude was about 12, and he was putting me up on game. This little youngster, I was like, damn. Wow. You know, it was right around the time of all that Fox recording. I was there in the background because my sister was married to my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. That's where he was from, and they were going out there to the parties and stuff like that, and that's when that Chris Blanchford um, uh, news special came out. Oh, so sure. with that little youngin, I started getting into more mischief, more GTAs, just just running amok, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, just... No, there was, like I said, there was really no parental guidance in my life at that time, you know? So it was just whatever came my way. If I was interested, we were running it. So at that time, you know, we started getting into that, but uh, I really didn't get into any trouble at that time. I was getting lucky. 
So, you know, running back and forth from, we were living, like, I want to say about in Arcadia at the time. My sister and my brother-in-law, they had a pad out there. And we, me and that little dude, we'd smash out in Get a in car all the way to Compton. And we would go G-ride other whips. And you guys are like 12, 14-year-old boys. Yeah. And we would drive all the way out there. And uh, this guy would put me up on game. He, he would tell me, hey, be careful right here. It's, you know, this neighborhood. And I've been on this car. I want it. If anyone comes out of that house, you already know. So he'd get in there looking like a little fucking ferret. Jumping in through the trunk, climbing through, about give him about a minute. That that little fool had the car started. Oh wow! And you were just there keeping point, waiting. And we'd to smash open it. back all the way to Arcadia from Compton, messing around in the G ride oh, and racing God. each other. We'd go back home and we, you know, strip everything down from that car. Mm -hmm. And we'd always upgrade my my cuñado. Every morning he woke up, he probably had a new system. <laughs> We would wow. always be involved in that and, and, you know, but that, that didn't last long. He was into his own lifestyle, you know, with his homies. I was into, you know, started getting into my own little thing. And then, um, I want to say, uh, at, like right around that time, I started get, falling out with my own crowd. And, uh, then I started getting arrested. First, I think the first time I went to juvenile hall was for a gun. Okay. Had a little strap on me. How and, did you get pulled over? How did that go? I just, just run, I was, I wasn't driving at the time. It was on, you know, streets, but just, they just walked up on me so close. I couldn't even run, couldn't run nothing. Hey, you know, I was still a young book. So I was like, damn, I know these, they're known for, you know, putting one in your back. Mm -hmm. So I was like, F I was just, it was too close. You know, uh, I think I had like a little Chrome 25, <laughs> one of those little Jennies, yeah, jammies. Those little ones. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first time I actually really went to the halls. And how was that experience for you? Because it was your first time. You're mm -hmm. obviously, were you a gang member? At that time, I wasn't from okay. yet. No. Okay, but obviously in there, it's a little different. Right? It was kind of smooth because I didn't bang. The oh, only okay. thing I had to worry about was trying to get me from my shoes. That's the only time I fought in there. Uh -huh. Had to keep an eye on my shoes because, you know. Because you know you had to leave them outside type yeah. of shit. And they find out you don't bang, it's open season. Oh, You know what I mean? On it. Yeah, just for that type of shit. But anything else, it was like, I didn't have no enemies. Okay. Only the enemies that got created if something happened in there, you know? Yes, yes. So it was just mainly trying to get back out on the streets, you know? Uh, spent like maybe, I want to say about three months in there fighting the case. Did you get any little, did you get any visits while you were there those three months? Mm, uh, that time, I want to say, did my mother visit me? Honestly, I can't remember if I was getting visits at that time. No, I had to have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure mom came through and visited me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she had to. She worked at the general hospital right across the street, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I was in uh, Central. I don't know what they call it, Central East Lake. Yeah, same shit. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was there, yeah. Yeah, she would come visit me. Was that your only time that you were in Juvenile Hall? Huh? No, no, they kept going. It After kept going. that, yeah. What, what would you say was like the worst thing you saw your first time being incarcerated? like your first time being in juvenile hall huh? cuz you know you're seeing things different you're there you know you're feeling different mm -hmm. like you're like fuck oh, yeah what would be the craziest thing craziest right oh, i can't i would just say just everybody just going at it on site yeah. enemies dissing enemies running up you know what i mean i didn't oh, really what about the saddest the saddest uh I can't remember nothing. Oh, well, really that's good sad. then. You're not. You weren't traumatized from your first uh, juvenile hall experience. Honestly, maybe if I was, probably wouldn't have went back. Or that's I don't what know. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we we take shit for granted anyways, though. That you know, is a soon fact. As you're in there and you're like, I'm never gonna go back. Yeah, you're never gonna go back. And you, you, as soon one as you day, hit that, you're out. <laughs> as soon as you hit that smog, mm -hmm. it just clogs your mind. Yeah. And you forget about that real quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I kept going back after that. For like violations for you just not no, being home or just, just other cases. New cases. But you know what? I was so I would use so many different names when I was younger ah. that they would call and ask my mother, "Is this your son?" Or they'll say, "Your son so and so is here." She wouldn't tell them like, "What? That's not his name." She would just already know. 
That did it to you, I'm gonna go pick them up. Yeah, so then I had all these cases pending for me, but under different names. names. You know what I mean? Like I think um, just little random, little random went in the halls and I would be in there for like a month and get released. And I was supposed to be on probation and all this and I would just straight forget about you. it because it wasn't under my real name. Oh, sh So, well, you know, uh, I finally at 17, uh, I want to say I was 17. It was already, I was already full blown from my neighborhood. Um, I got busted. I had uh, bought a car from somebody and we were test driving it. So you were 17, you just bought your first car? Bought my first car. So you car. were making money? Somehow, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I came up on a little good little bag and uh, the first thing I wanted was a car. And uh, I went and bought a 79 Rivy from some cat. And uh, he was a mechanic, so he was tuning it up. And uh, he's like, let's take it for a test drive. Like, I want to make sure it's good. It's been sitting for a minute. Cool. And at that time, the chip Motorola phones were in. And I had a little chip phone on me. I thought it was a shit. So I'm calling everybody like, hey, I was always the type. You never had to wait for me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you always used to wait for someone to pick you up. And they always took forever. I was the opposite. I was in front of your pad like, hurry the you know what I mean? So I'm calling everybody like it's on. Let's roll. I'm, I'm test driving it right now. We're going to go. Uh, everyone was like, all right, all right, cool. So we take off for a test drive, and uh, I end up on the 605 all the way to the 210, and there's an exit right there, and I just, we just turned around. He was going to go back to his house, and I guess there was a, a highway patrol or a cop somewhere right there at the gas station and got pulled over while well, I had a quarter piece on me. And I didn't know this dude. I didn't know that he was on a good one on some meth. So when they pulled us over, they separated us. And I actually stashed. I tried to stash it on some just random shit, right, in between seats. Like, maybe they ain't going to trip too hard. So they get us out the car. And uh, they found, I guess they found like a little 20 of some G-Funk in, oh, in his sock, uh -huh. right? So they had him. And he was already an adult, right? I didn't know what his background looked like, but this was a... This was a, a friend of my, one of my cousins. He was just like, hey, my, one of my boys is selling a whip, whatever. So, you know, and uh, so that's how I got the car. But so when we're sitting right there, the cops came to me in the back of the cop car. Um, and uh, they, they asked me, they're like, hey, so um, whose stuff is that? And I was like, oh, man, it's mine. And they're like, are you sure? And they were, they were telling me. You know, we know it's his. Just let us know it's his, and you can leave right now. Because obviously they were able to tell. They wanted that he to was get him. One. They want, and they wanted to get him on that three strike shit. Whatever wow. they wanted to do, they wanted to wrap him up. Wow. They, you know, and they, I could see how that works on the other end, because I caught that right there. It's like, damn, these fools want me to tell them it's his. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, damn. I was, he's like, are you sure it's yours? One more time. It's like, yeah, it's mine. And like, all right. So when I got busted at this time, I'm like, man, I'm a goner. I might as well clean my, clear up my name right now, do all that shit. I'm 17, you know? Because you had all these cases pending with different names. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave them my uh, real name. I told, them, I told them as soon as they run my prints, I was like, man, let's, let's do it. And gave them my real name, went in there, and they're like, oh. Because, you know, when, every time I got arrested, they would, they would give my prints. But I don't know why they never brought up anything else. Yeah. Any of the other few times. Mm -hmm. But this time when I went in, they ran my name and they, they was like, hey, you got a few names. I was like, I know <laughs> it's going down. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be in here. So when I went to court, I actually went to Pomona court and there was this judge out there. His name was Baloo. And uh, no, everybody just was like. I think I had him. Yeah. I've had a pro Pomona probation before. Yeah, his, his name was Baloo. He was a judge. And everybody's like, this guy don't give no love. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I remember one time, we, all the excuses me and my mother used to make, man, as I talk about it, I just realized how much, like, they like, go through for you, you know? So, you know, we would go to court, and he'd say, every time you guys come in here, it's the same song and dance. You don't have no address. You know, your excuses why you don't finish classes for whatever they wanted me to do and stuff. And finally, when I went in, and he was like, I should take your mother in for all those names, for a green, you know? So I ended up doing, that was the, I was beginning of my 17th year and uh, 
they gave me a year in camp. So then I ended up going into the, to the camp system, not just juvenile hall. Yeah. How was the camp for you? Uh, that Compared was... Compared to juvenile hall? Because now you're already a gangbanger. Well, as soon as I got in, as soon as I went into the halls, it was already on. Okay. You know what I mean? Because of where I was from already, it was already... And I'm already knowing from prior what it is, so we were already ready to go. Okay. You know what I mean? So I already knew. I was like, all right, here we go. Uh, went in and right off the bat, just, you know, all that little kid shit. Started fighting. Who's this in your neighborhood, stomping it out on the ground, doing, doing that shit. You know what I mean? And then it's like, all right, so, you know, you play the game. You know what I mean? Yes. So it started off like that. But then, you know, I went to camp and uh, it was uh, the first camp I went to was that Challenger camp out there in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And I was there for about maybe six months and it was cool. One of my homies pulled up. My, my homeboy Thumper, and uh, we were there, and you know, we were just running amok there, taking turns, you know, so we could try to stay together the longest, uh -huh. ride with each other, and we were there doing that time, and um, I got my GED there, actually, and, uh, and they transferred me to another camp, which was an open camp, which was actually closer out in like San Dimas or something, and my mother could see me more often. So I was happy about that, and uh, but it didn't go well at that camp. Why? I had a lot of enemies there, you know what I mean? And uh, actually, when I got there, you know, they had weights there. So these fools were feeling... Buff. Yeah. They were, so I'm over here, I was a little scrawny-ass kid, you know, so I'm over here, but it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? And we got them up, and I actually got my brow split. I don't know which one, but yeah, I got tipped up that day. and. Uh, and then we got refiled on from that camp. So that was like a bad couple of months for me at that camp. But it was, at first I thought it was gonna be like all out open, but they were like, no, nah, we don't do that here. We, we fight on the down low. Down low. Because no one wants to lose their- Program, yeah. they're going home time. Not even that, just what they had, open camp. Your, your, your family could see you two times a week, any day of the week. Oh. So what if you had parents that only had Tuesday, Wednesday off? Mm -hmm. Well, they could come though at that at camp like that. They ah. could get there like that, you know. Were so, you able to wear like your regular clothes? Nah, well they give you camp clothing, okay. but over there it was jeans and a white shirt. Okay. Same, yeah, same, same attire. Part, same <laughs> jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, yeah. Jeans <laughs> and a white shirt. That's what it is, man. Yep. What would you say was the worst thing? There. Mm -hmm. At that camp. At that camp was was going heads with that because I went heads a couple of times with a couple of other cats in there and, you know, on the down low and shit, shit was cool. But there was this one on the other side and we didn't, they went out when we stood in and we kind of alternated like that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he would always look at me and just throw his signs and I throw mine, but I was like, that's the one. Like when we finally bump heads, it's gonna be on. That's the one, I'm, I wasn't worried about the other ones. They're more or less my height, my size, I was like, cool. I'm good with that, but that one right there, was he bigger. wanted me. Yeah, he's like, he's just, he would look and throw his signs at me. I throw them back, and then, but you know, one day I was in the chow hall and I was leaving, and uh, someone dissed my neighborhood, and I turned, and it was him. It wasn't him, but at that moment I thought it was him because he was kind of laughing about it. So I dissed his neighborhood, and we got up. He got up right behind me, and he's like, let's roll, coming out the chow hall to the back of the camp. And we tried to get to the back. And uh, a staff saw us and they're like, what the fuck you doing? Get in line. So on our way back to camp, we had a march. It was like a boot camp style. We were marching back. And he got out of line to come up to me later, I heard, to tell me that we were still going to go heads. But, you know, this dude, I wasn't about to take any kind of, I wasn't take that chance of letting him talk. So right away, I started taking fire. In the line. In the line, because he was, and it, we were in between buildings, so we had a little bit of time. But... You know, every time I went, every time I was hitting them, but damn, every time that dude would hit me, they were hard. Oh. So I got like two in and then he just hit me, boom, and I'd feel it. Oh. Oh. And we're going heads and going heads. And yeah, he split my, one of my eyebrows. I think it's I that know. one. Yeah. But the funny thing about that was after when, when I got, when we went to the hole, you go to another camp, right? I think it was Camp Rocky. We were inside the hole and a female came and visited me, one of the staff from, from our camp. And she's like, you know what? I actually felt sorry for you. She's like, until we interviewed everyone. 
And everybody was saying, you came to this camp dissing everybody's neighborhood, wanting to fight everybody. And I was like, damn. Every light on you. Everyone just, yeah. I don't know if you want to call that snitching, but, but I was like, damn, that's a cold one right there. She, and she, she actually took her time to come back to the camp because it was you. a different camp down the street. I really don't know how far it is. Mm -hmm. It was another lockdown camp. And I'm telling you, I was so lumped up. I, I was just swolled up that people came by and even prayed for me. <laughs> Dang, he got you. Yeah, he got me. But you know, I guess you win some, you lose some. Right? Of course. Yeah, so, yeah, now when she came back, she was like, I felt so sorry for you. You know, you're all beat up. That dude's bigger than you. But now I find out you're over there starting shit. So that's what the you get. She told me straight up. Dang. And you know, and I go to the restroom and everyone tried to look at my face. I had to and put you're... that towel over my head and go down. I'm like, man, I ain't oh, gonna let no one no. see me. Yeah, I was lumped up right there. Yo, that was a crazy experience. And then we got refiled on, right? So now we had to go back to juvenile hall. So now we go back to the Together. hall. Together. Yeah. Well, I don't know where they had him, yeah. but we were separate. But every time we went to court, we had to go to court handcuffed together yeah did you guys ever fuck it nah we didn't we kept it we got in court you know everyone's in front of us so we just like fuck it we got them up or whatever so we, we, we would go to court and they were sending us both to YA and this is how I actually dodged going to YA because um, the judge was like do you have anything that you've done productive the time you were locked up and I was like wait a minute I was like yeah I got my GED and he's like, you do? And they did a little recess. My public defender came in. He's like, dude, that saved you. So they actually sent him to Y.A. And I don't know his story from there. Yeah. But I went to a camp in Malibu called Camp Gonzalez. And from, I didn't know that that was like the last resort before you go to Y.A. Right. So they sent all the kids there. So he got, he got sent to Y.A. I got, went back to that camp. Gonzalez. And I had maybe about three more months left. As soon as I got there. What was the difference between that camp and all the other ones? Uh, it's like being, I want to say, just, they're just rowdier. Okay, more wild. And they seemed older. Uh -huh. I was like, damn, Steve, some of these fuckers belong in the county, bro. What the <laughs> f*** are you doing in here? You know, they seemed older. And uh, I remember getting there the first day I was there. You know, obviously we got there, everyone's in school. As soon as school came out, um, they, uh, these two cats came straight in. And I, went, I was in the restroom washing up. And they went straight to the restroom. And this is the first time I saw this. Uh, they got down on their knees, kind of squatting behind the wall. And they started going at it tough. And uh, I was like, Psh, you just got to act like, you know, you're still doing shit. Make some noise, you know, because, you know, you it's echoes get, in there. Get, get them, you don't want to get them in trouble. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Now you know. It's going down right here. You know, and the dudes looked older in there at that camp. They, you know, they were bigger, they were the, you know, so right off the bat, uh, it was cool only because I didn't have no enemies there. Got it. So I was like, all right. And then I had my GED. So I was like, how do I get out of school right here? And I told them, so they put me on like a little work, a little cool. workforce, you know, just out there doing shit, cutting trees and shit. But the craziest thing, there was, uh, since it was like that, I think it was like the third night I was there, this one crip came walking down the, 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 the aisle, just a bunch of beds, you know, it's a dorm lift. And he's like, it's on tonight, blacks against the Mexicans, blacks. So I'm like, these fools are having r racial riots in this motherfucker too? At the camp. At the camp. And I was like, damn, bro. I was like, fuck. And uh, so now everyone's just looking at each other. And this cat, you could kind of tell he had a lot of pull in that camp. Like he was like a big black fool. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like one of those cats that, he, like he called it right then and there. And everyone's kind of looking at each other like, I guess it's cracking tonight. Oh, shit. So there that was, was your first time? Like three days after you said? Being there, yeah. So, you know, I was, people beside me, they were all homies really. And uh, we're kind of looking around and they're just like, fuck it. And there was these two little cats. I remember one was from Reseda and the other one was from 18. They were up to something, right? They started whispering. I didn't really know them that well. So 
sure enough, like clockwork, the lights go out. The first thing lights go out about nine, uh, they would play oldies. Food start folding their mats back. They pull out their pencil. You know what I mean? They get to calligraphy, start writing their ladies and shit. After that was done, uh, I think at 10, they would shut that down and uh, I think the staff, it would do like a shift change. Mm -hmm. Well, when that shift change happened, bam, it just went all out. Everyone jumped up. Everybody's going at it in there. Just fighting. Yeah, and as we're fighting, I remember because the camp, that camp had windows that you could see out. There was this tree in the corner that had a branch that was close to the wall. The walls, I don't know, must have been about 20 feet high. These little knuckleheads, they ran. The two little ones. Mm -hmm. The two cats I was telling you about, they were escaping as we were all fighting. Those ones are dead. The only thing I saw was a pair of white Cortez jump from the tree branch to the wall and then over the wall and they were gone. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I say about a week later, I was in the box, that's what they call it, and they brought them cats in. They were out there. No, I want to say about four days. They were gone. Because that camp is in Malibu, like in the mountains. Sometimes you can see people hiking by. You can see them up there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I don't know where they were, but when they came back, they looked malnutritioned <laughs> and beat up. Damn. They were happy to come back, and we were like, fuck you, go, fool. <laughs> Man, them kids. Poor them, boy. Yeah, they were. They and, tried. Uh, yeah, they tried, and I think they were asking somebody to for a change for a phone call or something like that, and it, it just, I don't know. That's how they Yeah, they, how they got caught up. Yeah, so that was my little craziness right there. That is a little, that is a little crazy little experience, you know? Yeah, that was, a, that was a cool little journey. So yeah. then, you're, now you're 18 years old. Mm -hmm, I, I came home, came home at 18, got released from the court, and there was a, actually, there was a program in that camp there was this professor that came from Pepperdine, and he would go and have classes there at, at Camp Gonzalez, like night classes, mm -hmm. right? And I was in the dorm, and these, these cats, they gave them like different clothing, little polo shirts, some dockers, right? And you know, you're tired of wearing, in camp they had those like that over there, you know what I'm saying, without the CDC, but you know, I was like, man, I'm tired of wearing this shit, and I'm like, who are these cats, what are they up to? And I didn't have nothing better to do in there, so, I was like, well, I got my GED. Can I join that program? Because this professor and his wife would come and they would have a class in there. And I saw a couple of homies and I was like, damn, like you guys are in this class. And they're like, yeah, man, it's cool. You get out of the dorm. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, a little higher learning situation. So I, I, uh, I inquired about it and uh, they, they put me in that class. And what they do is they take you from the dorm and you go live in the box. But one side is the box, and the other side they give you a room with a little a little, uh, a, little uh, a tote, and they gave you like five pairs of Dockers, some polo shirts, and and I was like, it was just a change closer to home, you know, that feeling of you're not locked up. So now I had my own little room. I, you kind of roam around the way you want, and I was hanging around in there for a while, and I was actually doing the class. Well, this professor and his wife, they would choose. Um, there was already two homies that they took from camp and they took them to their home. And I can't tell you what, what they became came now, but they were on their way. Like he was setting them up to go to Pepperdine College to do something, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So uh, I guess they took a liking to me too. And uh, my, I was supposed to get released under their care and go straight into like that little program. But something happened where it fucked up and I ended up going home. Like my mom picked me up which they didn't want that. And it was too late because that little Rivy that I had bought when I got busted, it was waiting. still waiting for me. My, my so brother-in-law and my sister that. hooked it up for me when I was busted. Oh, wow. And my mom would drive it to go visit me when I was in the halls and stuff. When I got refiled on, I was sitting back in the halls, they would come visit me and she's like, yeah, we got the Rivy out in the front. Here they painted it midnight blue. I was like, oh man, it's on. And my brother-in-law put some sounds in it and shit. Um, but so when I got home, I, I called them and they were supposed to come pick me up and I got to see my car. I got to feel just being home for about a week and my, my, my nano rest in peace was telling me, you gotta leave, you gotta leave. And you know, we, we always, what she said was final, you know, in our family. So 
I was like, all right. But I left and I did go out there with him. And I was living with two other homies and, and, and that professor and his wife was a professor there too. And they, right away they got me a job. They were, they, I filled out the app at a local Taco Bell. Uh, they were already putting me in. I went to a, like a continuation school somewhere in San Fernando. I don't know where, cause they lived way out that way. Um, but they, uh, I couldn't do it. When we went to the, I think it was Walmart or Target at that time maybe. When we went to the store to buy my cosmetics and all that stuff for the house, before he wasted money, I was like, what was his, I can't remember his name, Professor Heaney or, I don't remember, but anyway, I told him, man, I can't do it. He's like, what? I said, it's too late. I already got a taste of being at home. I don't want to waste your time anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he was mad. He was upset. Of but he course. did. He took me and he to dropped me off. And, and my mom was hot. Because you were They back. were upset because I came back. And I thought, you know, you lie to yourself. I could do it. Why do I need to be in a program like that to get yeah. better? But yeah, it was all bad after that. Why? What happened? Well, you know, I got my, got, I went back home, got my car, and right away I was out there just doing your shit. Yeah, up to no good. You know what I mean? But it was funny though, cause I always worked at a young age. You yeah, know, it sounds like you always had money. Yeah, I always, I was, I always made it happen. But um, one of my aunts, she hooked me up. She got me a job. I was doing pest control. Oh shit! I had a company truck and shit. But before that happened, when I first came home at that age, I remember that car and I was just getting into a bunch of trouble. But my family was, you know, forced to get a job. I was like, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna get a job, I'm gonna do all that. It wasn't happening right away. Like um, what we expect. We expect it to be like right then and then. Yeah, right there. And it didn't work out like that. Honestly, I couldn't even remember how I would get around and I wasn't really into, I was, I was more of a, uh, I wasn't, I was only into one thing on the streets. I wasn't really into slanging dope or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I was just interested in gang banging. That's it. So, you know, I was caught up in that life and I couldn't really tell you where I was getting my money to move around. You know, obviously the car takes gas and, you know, but I didn't have that car for long. That ended up getting in the whole situation. And, uh, but, I started working and I was trying to live both lives, but I was too into, I was using my work money to support my, Other life. my hood life. You know what I'm saying? And it was back and forth at that time. Uh, I want to say I came home, that was, say, I think it was one year and then I got busted for my first gun as an adult. So you were already 18, 19. Yeah. Yeah. And I got busted. Uh, I couldn't really do nothing because it was not my, my, actually my brother-in-law lent me his caddy. And I thought I was all cool and I was going somewhere and I was packing and uh, I actually saw one of my homies walking down the street and I was like, what the fuck is he walking around here for? I turned around and picked him up and then we got swooped up on. Right then and then. Yeah, and they, they had it on me, you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, they had it on me, they, they got it on me. I tried to get away with it. I've got away with it before. I used to pack a little strap in my shoe and they would never find it. But as a juvenile, they weren't thinking to check your shoes. So I tried to run that as an adult. It didn't, it didn't, didn't work out. Work out. Nah. So it was no choice. I had to, you know, so when I got busted, my PD came in and he was like, same routine, plead not guilty, you'll come back. And I'm like, nah, nah, I'm guilty. I need to hurry up and get this shit cracking. Yeah. He's like, what? So for my first gun charge as an adult, they only gave me 30 days. Oh, wow, because you didn't want to fight it. You just jumped on it, and that jumped was that. Jumped on it. He came back in and said, they're going to give you 30 days for your first gun and, and probation. I said, shoot it. I did two weeks in the county. That oh. was, I, I just got out from doing a year in, in, in camp, right? It must have been like six months later or something. But uh, that was the longest two weeks I've ever done. Tell me why. Because I, like, I was like, two weeks ain't shit. It's different. It's different. So now I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm going to be out of here like that. Fuck that shit dragged on every day. Well, what every made day. it feel so long? Like, what was this? Like, what happened? I, just, just long. I don't know the days. You don't even know the time in that moment. That is definitely true. You know what I'm saying? Is it daylight in there? Is it, <laughs> you know, you don't know. You, I mean, you kind of figure it out after, but. Did you adjust? Man, quick? dude, I felt like I was in a, a like a. I don't know, to tell you my first experience through the county, 
I was just tripping out because I was like, damn, there's really no, no, I mean, there was so many blind spots and so much active shit going on. They threw us in a church. In a church? Yeah, it was so packed, like coming in. Oh, they wow. Like all the people coming in, like one night I slept in, in the church in the county. I don't even know if they, if it's open, they even run church in there, but there was a church. We fucking, people were on, on a, up on a stage, two steps up, laying down, blankets everywhere, and you don't really sleep, you know what I mean? No, You're no, on a fucking yeah. night watch, you know? You run into homies, you know, you tell your little war stories, you know what Normal I'm saying? Shit. What do you hear? Ah, man. And it was just an experience. I was just like, damn, dude, like, I felt like I was like in a little underground city. Wow. You know what I mean? Just going through that. And by the time, by the time I finally got settled in somewhere, it was like, I think it, I only had like another week left because I was just bouncing around mm -hmm. like that. I guess because I was so short on time, they weren't really tripping on putting me in. Anywhere. They anywhere. wanted you to, mm -hmm. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that was a crazy first time. Yeah, I actually had to go home in my socks. They sold your shoes? Yeah, the, who, you know, when I, they take all your property, right? So when I got released, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going home. So, you know, they hurry up to wait, go through the holding tank, holding tanks, holding tanks. And finally, I'm in that holding tank where I'm getting my property. Stale ass shorts and a shirt, probably still wearing the same shit. Uh -huh. And I'm like, damn, putting on my long ass socks. And I'm like, hey, where's my shoes at? Because I had all white shoes. I think I, I did, that's the thing, you know. But, and, I, you know, in the county, all white. That's what's accepted in mm -hmm. there. So that was a time where you couldn't bring no more shoes in, but if you already had them, and they're white. they probably let them go, right? Uh -huh. So I guess whoever was trustees or whatever, they got my shit. Uh... So when I got my bag, I opened it up and I'm like, where the fuck are my shoes at? And I tell the deputy, hey, I don't got my shoes. Fuck that, I ain't going nowhere until I get my shoes. He's like, all right, stay in there. And I thought about it, I was like, nah, fuck, fuck that. that. <laughs> I don't know how long they'll keep me in here for. <laughs> And they say, you know, you got your wristband on, you get a free bus ride. Yeah, that worked. Oh, it did? Yeah, because I went outside, I was mobbing in my socks, went straight to the bus. And he's like, man, go ahead. Oh, shit. Took the bus, went home, fucking jogged home from the rest of the way, like hurry up and got home. Yeah. What, did your, what, did your, what did they say when you seen you with no shoes? My, I went to my sister's pad. They're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> You know what I mean? Or, yeah, like First she's like, how the fuck you let someone get you for your shoes? I'm like, dude, my property is somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where it's at. I just got my shit and my shoes are gone. Yeah. She's like, all right, all right, you know? Yeah, so that was pretty crazy. That was my first experience in the county and jail. In the county jail. Yeah. How many times did you hit the county jail? Uh, twice. Okay, so you. Because that was, I got out in 97 of camp. Okay. I remember this shit like a book. I got out April. 14th, 1997, and of, of camp. Then, uh, in, no, yeah, because I got out April. In June, I had got busted for the gun as an adult, uh -huh. two months later. Yeah. And then after that, I got out again. That was 97. In 1998, I caught my case. Your big case. My big case, yeah. 1998 were the fucking years for me, too. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I was, my, my active years, it was 95, 96. And then 97, I was in, in camp, you know, and then I got out in 98, 99, and all this stuff happened to me. Oh. Yeah. So tell me about your, your big case that led you to your first prison term. Uh, so I got, I got busted for a gang-related shooting. Okay. And the uh, way it started was, you know, just... Uh, to be honest, we were living, I grew up, so I'm from Evergreen, that's in Boyle Heights. Mm -hmm. But where, where we came from, I lived in El Monte. And there was a group of us that would hang around one of my homies that was from out there. And as we started getting active, he started taking us around. So now you got this group of kids. From Armani and Evergreen. That became from Evergreen, and it be, started becoming a problem there. Obviously it wasn't at first. You know, we were a bunch of knuckleheads. That's when like party crews and all this stuff and we were all just a big old crew. I but, remember those years. You know what I'm saying? And then it started turning into like these party crews were all dressing in ball headed jerseys and all that. Mm -hmm. And I had a homie, my homie Crow Rest in Peace actually, that, that he was, when I first started hanging around my homies over there, they used to hang around with them. And I was just like a lost soul roaming the streets and I found my crowd right there, you know, and we started hanging out and, and you know, uh, uh, 
the homies from that neighborhood, they, they didn't really trip on us because, you know, we weren't from nowhere. But I remember them always saying, like, you guys need to get into this neighborhood. We see you guys a little active. Because a lot of my homies had family from there, too. Okay. But we were hanging around that dude, my homie Crow. Mm -hmm. And uh, as when, he's, we, when we started getting in fights at the, at the parties and stuff, and it started becoming active, because of my family, even before my neighborhood, I always packed a gun. I was always on that mode. Um, but uh, And they knew that? They didn't. Oh. I was one of those don't tell anybody you got one until you need it type yes. of situations, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were starting to get into shit with other neighborhoods going to parties because now you're starting to look like a gang member. Mm -hmm. So it started switching and that's when all that shit started happening. And I just remember one time we got into it and, and uh, my, my homie was actually getting into it. We were actually, after a fight, we took off and we were smashing out and my homie was like, damn, I wish I had a strap on me right now. I fucking like, because they were chasing us, I think. And it was right when it barely started. So I started looking out like, okay, people are about to find out what it is right now. You know, because I barely started hanging around my homies at that time. And they knew each other more than, you knew than them. I knew them. So I was like, okay, it's, they're about to find out right now. But before I did that, my homie Crow, he was like, man, I wish I had a strap. I like these fools up. So I just tapped on them. And I was like, and he grabbed it and he's like, who the fuck is this? And, you know, he went and took care of his business. And uh, then they were like, who the fuck is this guy right here? Like, who are you? And then it started becoming a little different. And then he, he started saying, you guys are starting to get active. Let's go to my neighborhood. And we started going over there. More and more and more. More and more and more. And he was getting into it more again himself because I can't, I, like, I didn't remember him doing that, you know, when I first came around them. But I didn't know him that well either. I wasn't, you know, and uh, anyway, he would go pull up to the neighborhood. My other homies would be there and they'd be like, man, these fools, they got my back, this fool right here. And telling the situation we get into. And one day my homie was like, uh, they were like, we were all in the alley in my neighborhood. It's a known alley. And they were like, well, what's up? You fools want to get into our barrio or what? And... There was some of my homies, I already knew, like I didn't know, I said no. I was like, nah, I'm good. And they actually respected that. A Couple of my other homies, they were up to no good, you know, hitting the pee dog, smoking weed. And, and they were like, whatever. And it just a full blown out rumble. They rumbled in, I say about 15 of us that day. Oh, sh and you ended up getting jumped in that day? No, I didn't. So I was like, well, I don't know this neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, I'm not, yeah. you know. You were smart like that because of your At sister and your brother-in-law. Well, and it was funny because my sister's from White Fence. Oh. I didn't even know the history between the two. And I have an uncle from White Fence, too. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay. So when they first got in, now the house that we used to kick it at over there, that was riding on. Because where we were at, there was no, it was just us and my homeboy's dad. And he was with us. You know, is is as it might sound like he he was just part of us so you walk into that house you see old english letters about 10 feet high in there and all that and the one who actually put me up on game was one of my primas she came to kick it with me one day and she's like what the fuck she's like they're from evergreen i'm like yeah that's where my homies are from she's like fool do you know oh, what the fuck no yeah and i was like what <gasps> So I was like, damn. So I looked into it more, you know. But at that time, it was too late. Like, I ended up getting this, like, like I was with my homies. I'd be like, hey, fool, you know, bang on this fool, hit him up, and don't trip. I'll be in the background with it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, they'd be like, well, what's up with you, fool? Like, and uh, so it, it took me about three months later. I was hanging out at the park in my neighborhood, and one of my homies ran up on me. My homie Solo, rest in peace. A lot of people I ran with, now they're gone, you know? And he put me on blast and he's like, everyone knew me there, so, you know, but it was weird because he came up to me and he hit me up, put me on the spot. And I'm like, well, what do you mean, homie? I'm like right here with the homies. He's like, but where you from? I was like, well, damn, homie, I guess I'm not from nowhere. He's like, all right. 
he gave me a reality check, right? And I started thinking about what's happening and where I'm at. And I was just like, you know what? And I said it right there. And I was like, what's up then? He's like, what's up? I said, let's get it. I want to get in. You know, and uh, so I tried to be smart. And I was like, okay, a couple homies walking away and shit. Hell no, homie turned around. Oh, no. Come back, come back. <laughs> so it was cool. So then after that, it was from there. Then it was on. That was in, I want to say, 95. And how was how Actually, it was 94 because my homeboy Crow passed away in 94. Oh. And I was already from the neighborhood yeah. at that moment. Yeah. So that had to be 94. And what did your sister say? Well, she was like, we have a family. My family grew up, uh, they grew up over there too. And they had like little fam, like my family had a history with that neighborhood. So she was like, hey, I see your homeboys are all gang bang the fuck out now. You guys better not be from over there. And I told her, don't even trip. You don't even got to worry about that. So then she's like, well, where are you from? And she was pressing me in the pad. I was like, damn, it's fucking gang related. <laughs> Banging on bacon and shit all up in the house. So, well, you know. Yeah, yeah. She was like. That's her house, fool. Yeah, yeah, straight up, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she said, uh, well, where are you from? And I was on the phone. We didn't have no cell phones and shit. It was just those chip phones, but I didn't have one at the time. I was on the house phone like, yeah, fool, hey, all right. Setting up the plans for the day or whatever. And I said, well, why don't you ask him? And she's like, it was my homeboy, Anthony. She's like, hey, where you from, fool? And I just, she was like, what the, f what? And she hung up on him. She's like, Are you serious? She didn't take off on you? Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. And that was her background. My sister wasn't your average. She was a fool, you know, and, uh, and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Call my uncle. Hey, you know where this fucker's from? And I was like, fuck. You already, but see, you already the, did it. But the cold part about it, my uncle from my fence, that fool has a lot of heart. I can't say, I don't remember, well, maybe I don't, because I didn't know his every move, right? Mm -hmm. But from my perspective, I don't think he was really a gunner on that level, but he had a lot of heart and he, had, he was always ready to go. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know before that, that there was an altercation between our two neighbors. We have a lot of history together, uh, you know, and when it was starting to go down, you know, uh, wife and came down to my neighborhood from my understandings and my uncle was with him. And they went to go confront my homies, and they didn't know my homies were a little deeper. Well, turned out to be my uncle's homies left him there, and he stood fighting, and they f***ed real bad. And I remember being young, like in fourth grade, seeing my uncle walk into our apartments. That fool was f oh, wow. still holding strong, but he was f so then. You know, that, I didn't know that at the time. Would, ha, would it have changed anything? I couldn't tell you that. But it was too late. It was already embedded yeah, in Yeah, for sure. You know, so even at that young of an age, you know, because like I said, a lot of my homies that got into my neighborhood that day that, that were like, I don't care. A lot of them fell off, you know. And when I, when I decided to make that move, like I really, like I, I guess it was the pact of my homies together and just, I don't know what happened. It just... It's like a, what is it, like a taboo or some uh -huh. shit, you know? It's like just something crazy that I used to be like, damn, I'm from a gang now. And all them fools trying to press us, it's on now because I'm on their level now. You know, it changed. But I remember my uncle coming in and I was asleep on the floor. And uh, get your ass up, fool. You from Evergreen, mother? Get your ass up. And I was like, damn, this fool's going to f right now, bro. I was like, F and I think one of my homies was living with me. And, at your sister's? Yeah, and that fool was just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we were youngins, you know? Yes. And my uncle was already older, so, so uh, he, and, uh, I got up like I'm about to get smashed on right now. And he gave me a hug, and he told me, I always remember blood thicker than water, you know? And I was like, all right. He's like, you fucked up, fool. I never thought you would go that route, you know? And I was just like, 
It is what it is. You came to know. Yeah. That's your heart now. Yeah. And uh, from there, you know, and then now it's full blown on blast and shit. And uh, at that time around there, the, you know, my, my mother was living down the street and uh, we were all close. We would all kick it together and stuff. Come over to my sister's. We'd always have parties there and stuff like that. My mom knew where I was from. She would go to my neighborhood looking for me and in my work truck. In my work truck? <laughs> yeah, in my work truck. She'd be like, yeah, I, see, I tried to look for you. Yeah, your older homie's trying to get at me. And I'm like, man, you better not be going over there. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So my, mom, my mom's pretty young, so. Um, but she would clown around like that. Look, and, uh, but, um, you know, she, I think, I want to say, like, I guess if you can't beat them, join them. Because my mom wasn't the type, because I had some homies, like, you couldn't go to their house. Their family wouldn't let you in. Mm -hmm. You know, my pad was one you could come to. My mother would rather have me there. That's right. Getting, somewhere else. Than somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I was still always gone, though, you know. But when we were there, it was, it was just all love. love. We would, you know, we went through a lot, but, um, you know, it was just, so I thought it was all good. So when I went to my neighborhood and I got my first little tattoos on me, I went home and my sister saw them. And I thought my mother would kind of trip, but no, I, that's when I realized, like, I really hurt my mom. She was hot. Like, she pushed me into the wall, and she told me, uh, look at my face and remember this face, this day. Like, you, like, I'm so mad at you right now, but yelling, though. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn. And then she went to walk away, and I was like, like, they're not that bad. Like, is it, is it bad? And she actually thought I was doing this to her behind her back. And so she turned around like, you motherfucker. Bam. And took a swing at me and shit. I did the Matrix move on her. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was, that was when, uh, you know, and then it just started getting deeper from there. Of course. Because now you're still already on, pro on probation. Yeah, and I, and honestly, I just kind of just, just ignored that probation already. You know, and then so now because of that, we started going at it with the, with the, so we're hanging around in, the, in not our neighborhood, right? Which, you know, it's just wrong from the gate. We're not, but we grew up there so we didn't see it different. But now you have this handle on you now. Mm -hmm. You're no longer just a knucklehead from the city. Yeah. You, now you're a neighborhood and you guys are about 15 to 20 strong. Uh huh. And since we were so used to running around and always hanging out at each other's pad, we didn't really, I didn't see it. I just, every, just resume normal program. But it was now looked at, now I could think about it like, damn, of course, because I wouldn't like that shit either. Yeah. You know, and. Now that we're older, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so then they started pressing us. You know, we were still going to their schools. You know, and because we were already there, we had to kick his spots, the good spot, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think I was already out of school at that time, coming in and out. I didn't, I didn't, I went up to 10th grade and I was in continuation. And that's when I got into my neighborhood. And then um, uh, maybe a little before that, but in the continuation though, I remember it was starting to go at it. Like they jumped one of my homeboys. So we went and jumped one of theirs and it just started off like that. You know, and, is that how the mm -hmm, yeah? So one day I got your first case. Mm -hmm, yeah. So they came to the they came to my homeboy's pad and they they were waiting for us outside and we got into it. And uh, because of that, I was like, OK, well, then, you know, you're going to shoot up the pad. So we went back out there and, you know, I already got sentenced for this case and anything. I did my time. So yes. anything I say can't be used against mm -hmm. me. You know what I mean? But it's like. It was known, you know, so, you know, obviously we're going to go back out and look for them. Mm -hmm. So we were just on them every day, every day, every day until we finally caught them slipping. Got it. And I, and, you know, did what I did. And, and uh, it was like, I want to say it was about, it was a Sunday afternoon, like about three in the afternoon. And uh, we did that. We were coming back from like a little kickback or something from another city. And we ran into them, did what we did. And, uh. We took off, and when we took off, I, I felt like a lot of I felt like a lot of people saw me because I stopped traffic, so I jumped out the car. I told my homeboy pull over, let me out. And uh, when they let me out, I took you know all the evidence with me and everything, but they ended up going, and uh, they got caught. They were waiting for them at that house, 
And the story was because they ran, when they gave them the plates, because it was, it was the plates of my homeboy's truck. But uh, he should have never came out that side street like that, you know. You know, when you're younger, as you're older, you think more like, you don't do nothing, you, you know, you don't say nothing. But when you're younger, you're making all this kind of noise, throwing up your neighborhood in the air and all that, and that's what was happening that day. So, you know. You were being seen by everybody. Yeah, so as I'm running back to the vehicle, my homeboys pulled up and they're yelling out the car, throwing gang signs still, and I'm just like. Come on, yeah. So someone caught the car and gave the plates up. Well, I guess when they ran the plates, there was a few unsolved shootings on that block. So they already knew what it was there. So they were already waiting. For you. So when they pulled up without me, they got caught. So I'm at the jack in the box waiting for them to come in a different car to pick me up and they're taking long. And I made a phone call and I talked to my little homie sister and she was, she didn't know better. I said, hey, where's your brother at? She's like, oh, he's outside. I'm thinking, these fools are outside kicking it, probably smoking one. I'm like, well, I'm out here at a jack in the box waiting for you to pick my ass up. And I told him, well, put him on the phone real quick. She's like, he can't, there's a bunch of cops outside. And I told her, don't ever say I called. And I guess she held that. Nice. She never told anybody that because that case was, uh, um, you know, they, uh, it was crazy. It was stupid. They found my wallet in the car. <laughs> yeah, it was all bad. No. Yeah. Well, a couple of weeks, the week before that, I had went heads with somebody. So I took my wallet out of because when I was telling you, I was still working and trying to do that life. Mm -hmm. And so I took my wallet out and put it in the glove compartment so I, so I could do my thing. I just like, I don't want to drop it. And I guess after all the excitement, I left it in there. So I, that's how it started with me. And then the person that got hit, they went and asked them if, uh, if it was you. Yeah, and that's where that started. Uh... So I was, I was out on the streets though and I was on the run for a while. That lasted for about maybe six months, I That's say. That's a pretty long time. Yeah, I was out there running around. I took off out of state. I couldn't do it. Came back. Too hard. At, at that age, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to kick back with the homies still. So I came back acting a fool still. And uh, so with that, I came back and uh, I finally got busted. They, they picked me up. It's funny though, because nowadays I think about it, like somebody had to say something, the way they picked me up. Wait, how did they pick you up? It was just, it was just like they were following me. I pulled up to, a, I can't remember, a restaurant or something to use the restroom. As soon as I got out the vehicle. Oh yeah, they must have been watching you. They were watching me. So they must, I don't know how they knew I was back, because I was taking the train back and forth from where I was at. I went all the way to Virginia. Oh, wow. My, on the train. My brother-in-law, he was like, you need to get out of here. Aw. He's, like, so he's been go. there, huh? Yeah, he looked out for me tough and, you know, and uh, so, um, is, and uh, so I took off and I was living with his family out there. Aw. Yeah, acting a fool out there still. Worse. Yeah, because he had a younger brother. Especially because, you know, he, he was came a, from LA. Year, yeah, he was a year, year younger than me. So, you know, I, and it was like maybe 30 minutes away from Washington, D.C. So I got there, you know, met his father, my, my, my cuñado's father, and, and his wife, and his younger sister, and his brother, which was a year younger than me. And uh, we did all the formalities. We got home, I got settled in. I was like, where do you get weed at around here? You know, it wasn't no dispensaries. Yeah, no. You know? So where you could get it at is in Washington, D.C. in the projects. So he's like, that's the only place you could get it. Wow. Yeah, so I was getting caught up doing that all the time trying to, you know, just get butted up out there. And then uh, taking the train, it was like a three day ride. Wow. Yeah, I took off with only like 14 bucks on me. I was hungry. I was on the train like, damn man. And there was this other kid, he was a blood. He was all f flamed up. And you could tell though, he looked like he had paper on him. And I had a, 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 a disc man with the All Eyes On Me double CD, the Tupac one. Mm -hmm. And that's all I had and I'm playing it. And uh, there's a part of the train where you could sit and it's like, you could kind of, it has the plexiglass windows where you kind of see outside. 
And uh, so he was there, he was drinking. He must have been about maybe 20, 21. Like kind of your age. So he's like, what's up? He's like, what's up, homie? And you know, it's weird, even though you're not supposed to be like, he's like, yeah, man, you know, I got into some shit. Did put in some work, got caught up and I got a role, I'm going to Chicago. I was like, yeah, I'm going to Virginia. <laughs> He's like, damn, so we started chopping it but up. But he was from here. He was from LA somewhere. I forgot, I can't remember what neighborhood. He was a blood though. So we were chopping it up on the train. And he's like, what are you bumping? And I told him, and he's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks for that right now. I said, Dang. here, take that shit. He gave me the money and I told him, I'll be back. He's like, what are you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna go eat real quick. In the train, they had like a little spot, you get some snacks. So I came back and we just chopped it up, laid over in Chicago for just about eight hours. And we walked downtown, just, we, we hung out together in a way until he picked a train and went his way. You and I went way. my, we were just strolling around and shit, just tripping out. We were just two young ass kids, not even knowing what the hell we're doing just and shit. Just some mission to get away. Uh, yeah, yep. And uh, so when I came back though, I came back uh, and I got caught up. And honestly, it was a trip though, cause when I got caught up, I was like, it felt like a weight got lifted off my back. I probably, I, that was the first night I slept good in a while. And the whole, I was like, I'll worry about everything later. I'm crashing out, fuck it, it's over, mm -hmm. I'm done. Was you that know. the time that you went to prison? Yeah, but no, that was for that case. Okay. So I, I get busted, I was in there in the county running around from county to wayside. And uh, at the time, in between time, that's when I was trying to make music. When I was in Virginia, I was, I was trying to do like little demo tapes and shit. Oh, cause you rap? Yeah. Okay. So I was in, in a basement making these karaoke tapes, putting a CD in with an instrumental and having the tape record and just rapping. Over it, yeah. And doing stuff like that and I would send them out. So I met, uh, uh, I send my tape to somebody and they actually wanted to f me. So that's one of the reasons why I came back so I was trying to do that in between time. So I, I did get a little bit out, out there at that time. And uh, so when I hit the county, I was in there and I thought, you know, I kept like, that wasn't something I was worried about. You know what I'm saying? But it ended up catching wind. While you were in there? Yeah. And I was surprised the way, you know, cause from before it was like, homies don't rap. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't, you know, they don't really tolerate that shit and shit. But it was a whole different vibe in there. You know what I'm Why? saying? Like, we'd just be in our cells and when store would come, people would get all pumped up, drink their coffee. You don't hear, you don't see no faces, you just know people by their voice. Cause you don't see them, you just see, you just, they're in other cells. Ah. So they, they, there was always one, one black fool, he would shut down the whole fucking tier and start rapping and beating on his bunk. And then there was another homie that kicked it off and he would be rapping. And then they would hit me up like, hey, Cass, what's up, fool, you rap? Hit a verse. And then next thing you know, it was like every Wednesday night Maybe on the tier. Maybe time go by faster. Yeah. So I was in there, like, I really didn't, would, I was fighting life, and I really didn't <laughs> grab that. Would you say that you rapping in their major time and your heart still feel like you were ali alive? Because you said right now you didn't even really even grasp the fact that you were fighting life. Um, nah, I, I don't think that was part of it. Yeah, I didn't, and you know, I seen a lot of food stressing because at that time they had a murder module and they put me in there, it was a 4,000 floor. That's what they called it. Everybody had wristbands with 187 on them. Okay. And that, I had the burgundy wristband, it had 187 on it and I was like, damn. I was like, I don't know. I just honestly, it might sound um, ignorant or I don't know what you want to call it but I didn't see myself doing life in prison. And I actually got a reality check in there from an older cat that told me like, fool, you over here, you better check your fucking self because when they say, when they give you that time, you better be ready because that's going to break your ass if you don't prepare. Yeah, if you don't and, mentally get yourself together. And, and I guess he, you know, caught a little thorn up his ass when I told him like, I'm sorry, homie, I just don't, I don't see it. And that was stupid talk though, you know, but that's the way I really felt. Um, so I was in there and I see all these cats were stressing because you know, they had ladies and shit. And I used to see them on their phone. Where the f 
for you because in the county shit's on all you know what i mean those phones were on and uh i'd see homies will be playing cards and one would look serious get up use the phone nothing hang up come back play some cards get up um, uh, yeah and then you'll hear where the fuck were you yeah fucking market for three hours bitch oh. and i'm like <laughs> damn you know so and i sat there and i thought do I have any feelings for anybody? And I'm just like thinking, like, do I care for, no? Then you're good. Man, my time went so fucking smooth that time. And so that kind of helped out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was young, I didn't have no kids, I didn't have shit going on. My grandma rest in peace. I told my family with all my heart and honesty that I didn't want them to get me a lawyer because I knew what I did. Aww. You know, I was like, I, I'm not ask, I'm one, no one's stressing it is what it is, but she went ahead and did it anyway. I can't say that I didn't in my feel like, but I didn't want them to see that. I was like, no, nah, I did what I did. Don't worry about it. Like, I don't want a lawyer. It is what it is. I'll fight it the way, you know. So uh, my two homies that were busted, they had, when they, they had originally got busted, they were already taking deals. Yeah. And. Because uh, they got busted before. They were, our cases were separate because of that. Mm-hmm. And they took deals. Uh, so when I got there, um, they were already gone. So I was fighting my case. And uh, it was just like going to court. My family finally, I went to court maybe two times and the dude showed up. And I was telling someone on the phone that I did used to talk to, I was like, don't even trip. This doesn't happen. Like, homie, solid. No one's going to drop any dimes. And we went to court, and first thing is like, okay, the person that you shot is here. I'm like, mm, okay, maybe he's forced, because I think he was busted too. Uh -huh. And they're bringing him in. I'm like, okay, maybe he's forced. Still, I'm not tripping. Nah, municipal court. They said, there's a person in here that shot you. And he said, yup. And I just was like, oh, shit. It's getting bounded over. Yeah, so from there, it was like, all right. Now I know I got that situation going on, and it was a rough ride, you know. Um, that neighborhood, they're deep as f and I was running into a whole lot of them. Yeah, and then when they finally find out who I was, you know, you know they were, you know, of course you're gonna be upset, right? But you know, in the county, you, you don't can. play that. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes you can, you know what I mean? Like depending on the how personal it is, and depending on who you are, and if you give a or not uh -huh. if you're willing to take that consequence yes so i went in there a little pumped up and my homies had sent the word that they were doing that already to me they were telling my mom was relating messages saying don't go back they don't 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 stay where you are because they're dropping dimes on you but it didn't happen so when i got there i was just like yeah but so but it was weird so my family got me a lawyer a lawyer that my cuñado again, you know, said, oh, man. Shout out to your cuñado. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> busted right now. He's in the feds. And uh, that's a whole other situation. But um, they got a lawyer from his homies that always dealt with cases like that. He's just a trial lawyer. Daniel Hustwit. Look him up. Good trial lawyer. And uh, he was young and hungry, I guess. And uh, he took my case on. And he shined, he took me in. We, I was going to court for almost about a year. For the attempted murder? Yeah. So because of that, I, I don't remember, like, I went straight to trial. They weren't, I don't rem ever remember no deals getting offered. Okay. But I guess because they thought they had me. Or else if, I don't know, I probably would have second guessed going to trial over a life case that I left my wallet in the car and the dude was dropping dimes on me. I don't know if I would have ran that, mm -hmm. but I don't remember having a choice. Yeah. You know, so um, I ended up going into court and uh, uh, trial started and, and I started fighting that case. And at the end of it, I got a hung jury. Nine people said guilty and three said innocent. Oh. Yeah. So then it all starts but, all over again, right? Until everybody. But they can't. <coughs> Yeah, during that trial, it was, it, was, it was a crazy one. You learn a lot, you hear a lot, you get to see the aftermath, because you're never there for the aftermath, mm -hmm. right? I was there listening to all kinds of statements of what happened after. 
people around, security guard at the corner, uh, not actually you... seeing somebody do something, but just the aftermath. aftermath yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I was kind of tripping out because I never got to, you know, you never know what happened. You're gone. Yes. You know, so I'm like, damn, all right. Poor lady. Probably traumatized a lady or two, you know, and, and uh, they witnessed it too, and they were there crying and giving their testimony. But it was just broad daylight in a, in a busy street, so people just caught on. But, you know, it was just all out craziness at the time, yeah. you know. You don't, you're not thinking about that. At all. Or consequence, anything, you know. I was thinking about, like, I don't want to shoot any innocent people, but where I was at and where the corner was, it was all open game, you know. Mm -hmm. It was in the clear, but... Um, but I just remember, yeah, going to trial, being in deliberation and then coming in and my lawyer saying, you know, like we did it. So I thought I was going home oh. and I was like, well, is that not guilty. He's like, nah, we got a hung jury, but that's still just as good, man. So I was like, fuck, man, I thought I was gonna go home, but fuck it. So then here comes the court processes all over again. And then now they started offering me deals, coming back and forth to court. He told me the last time I went to court, it was another like two months and he said, all right, man, Today's our last day. You know, at that point, I already had trust in my lawyer. If he's saying it's the last day, that's what it is, right? Yeah. So he's like, you have to take a deal or we're going back to trial. And if we do, this is the paperwork you're going to have to sign, and it's going to be another 10 racks now. So after they charge you with the first, then the, the, they can't charge you with the same uh, charge, right? So I has to go lower. So now I'm getting deals. and then, But I was like 18. I was like, I ain't taking 18. 15, I was like, nah, I ain't taking 15. Then 10 came around and I was like, ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Let me, oh, I mean, but I'm asking him like, what do you think? What do you think I could do, you know? And uh, anyway, so he came down to it. I was in there for almost a year at that time. I'm thinking I'm going to prison. And he comes in and he tell, burnt out. It was like, after the buses leave, you're on the late train. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he's like, I got two more deals for you after this, we're signing. I said, what is it? He's all seven years with one strike. Oh, they even went down to four years, but with two strikes. Oh. You know, that's a setup. Yes. I was like, I don't know what I'm getting into in there. You know what I'm yes. saying? So I was like, nah. At least you were smart enough to think that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because I already knew. I was like, nah, man, Fuck that. I've heard stories about that. So I was like, I'm not doing that. So he said, seven years with one strike or eight years in one strike. And I'm thinking, what the? Seven years in a strike, right? Yeah, I'm like, what's, what's the difference? He's like, all right, pay attention. He says, he tells me, you get the seven years, you go to prison right now. If you take the eight, you'll sign for it, and they'll let you go. And I was like, fuck, you mean I'm going home? He's like, hold on, hold on. Listen, fool, don't be stupid. Yes. You get the eight years, you sign, you get to go home. But. And you're on probation for five years. Uh, what is it called? There's formal, formal. probation, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be on formal probation. It's like parole, sometimes it's worse. I feel like probation is worse. The formal is, to me, mm -hmm. from my experience. And uh, so anyway, he tells me that and I'm like, all right, so. Uh, he's like, think about it. And he sent me, I went back to the holding tank and I'm like, fool, I, I was home. in here for almost a year thinking I'm doing life for one, fighting life, and then at least doing a 10 year. You're telling me I could just get the out of here right now and if I make it on those five years probation, you're good. I'm good. I'm gonna do time anyway. To me, I'm like, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I, fuck the way I seen it, because they were like, you're stupid, fool. You should just go handle that right now. I'm like, f you, because I just been in here fighting life this whole time, grimy as fuck. They're telling me I could go home within three days. I said, I'm taking it. I'm going to prison anyways. It's like getting a fucking hall pass. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, and I have a chance to beat it if, I, if, if I'm slick enough, yeah. you know? And I, I think I told myself, like, I'm not gonna f around no more. You know, I don't know what, what was happening. And uh, so I signed and I came home. I came home and I, I, as soon as I, and I was supposed to call my moms, have them pick me up. As soon as I walked out that county jail. You're a different, you're back to you. Straight up. Like the, 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 the fucking thoughts were changing already at the phone booth because I was supposed to call my moms. I ended up dialing my homie's number. 
So then he just comes this fool in a, a 86 or some Buick, hitting the corner on three wheel, clowning, picks me up. I don't think I went home right away. I, I, I might have. I went home, and already my homies were there waiting for me. My mom was there. Everybody. I gave her a hug, and uh, she's like, son, what are you doing? I said, mom, I'm just going to go out to eat with him. She's like, you just got, came home, you know? I was like, yeah, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see um, everyone tomorrow, you know? And uh, I went out with my homies, we went out and ate, everything was cool, and I was, I was doing it. I was, on, I was on that probation. I was on that probation for a while, and uh, I was trying to live both lives again. But at that time, my homie Scooby, rest in peace, had just around there. Oh, actually, he passed away when I was locked up. And that was like a big homie in my neighborhood, shot caller. Uh, my homie Scooby, rest in peace. So I was catching wind of that in there. So when I came home, it was all bad in my neighborhood. And uh, I went right back into that. So I didn't last out there too long. I got a... We were, we were in my neighborhood at the park and I walked across the street with one of my homies cause he was, he, he was fucking naked out there without one. And I was like, where are you going? He's like, I'm gonna go across the street real quick. I went with him and got swooped up on. I ran. A week after or some shit? No, I think I wanna say it was a couple of months. Okay. Cause I was, I was starting off slowly thinking I was smart. So I was like, well, I could just be in the neighborhood but I won't come out the yard. So now I'll be in the neighborhood, I'll stay in the yard. Like, hey, hey, you know, my homies had my back. Hey, dog, you think they had your back, not in a you bad way. Go in the house. But we, yeah, just go in the house. Hey, hey, well, the homie right here, keep it low. You know, do all that mm -hmm. shit. So I'll do that. And then, well, I could come out the yard and kick it on the gate. Yeah, I'll jump the gate, come inside. And then sooner or later, it was just full blown. Back I'm walking here. around, strolling. We were doing what we did. Yes. You know, um, so. It lasted like that, and then it just started getting bad, and it was just full blown out. Back to you. Back to me, just fuck it. I don't even remember. I don't even, I, I still had a job, and I was doing all that. I don't remember my, uh, I don't remember my, um, where was I working at? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> You'll never guess where I was working at at that Your time. Face. Where? Victoria's Secret. Oh my goodness. I, yeah, I would never even guessed. In the Glendale Galleria. Galleria. My homie's sister worked there. And when I came home, he got me a job there. Is stocking fucking kimonos and lingerie and shit in the back and pulling them out and steaming them. But even though we had jobs, like we were all active in the hood, the type be like, mm -hmm. we got to do this, we got to do that. You know, trying to be organized on that level, like not even, you know, just full blown so blind in that lifestyle, you know. Um, anyway, and uh, so I was, I was doing that and I was in my neighborhood and getting caught up and then I got, I got cracked that day. I ran through the strap, got busted. They found the gun in a yard, the neighbor gave it up. And so, but when I went to the glass house, one of my homies bailed me out before my name even got ran. And from there- that was a move before. Yeah. Hurry up, get me out. Yeah. But I thought I was gone. I was like, F I did a little stretch, got a little free time out here. I'm going to do my time. Yeah. And, uh, but then they called my name. And I was like, what the f and, and, and you know, all the little, everybody in there is in a little circle conspiring. Like, hey, what do you think? Like, I got, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, and I'm like, I'm busted, fool. I'm, I'm gone now. I have a joint suspension and all that shit. And they, out of the dudes that were trying to get away with that, I was the one that got up and they called my name and they're like, what the fuck? They're like, hey, shut the fuck up. You're getting released right now, bro. I'm like, that's what this for? But I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. And I only fucking pulled a rabbit out of the fucking hat on that one. So I got released and from there, I was gone again on the run. On the run. How long were you on the run for? At that time, I want to say about a good six months again. And I was just, I even took off again out of state. But it couldn't last again, came back, and I was just up to no good again, just said, I'm full blown out here. And, uh, and then I ended up luckily getting caught up without, without another case. 
So when I went to court, my lawyer represented me again. He came back, and this time he did a favor for my family. And he came and he's like, you put it on the money, homie. You said you, you're getting out on a free pass. And I was like, man. He's like, well, now you have a gun charge for that gun six months ago. He said, but look, if you tell the judge you had it, they're going to dismiss the gun case and let you go with your eight. And I was like, bro, I ain't never did no shit like that before. Are you sure? He's like, I'm positive. Oh, it's already wow. in the works. So I'm like, so I went into court and the judge asked me, did you have that strap on you? Not in that way, but yeah, he's like, did course. you have it on you? And I said, yeah, I had it on me. And he said, why? I said, the, I guess the environment I put myself in, the situations I put myself in. And he told me, whoa, that's the first step. I realizing. Yeah. He says, so you know what? I think your eight years, I think you'll, you'll learn something in there. So we're going to dismiss the gun charge. Because I was on top of it. Yes, yes, So yes. they dismissed it, and then I ended up going to prison. Prison. For the eight years. For the eight For the years. joint suspension. For the joint suspension. And in between that time I was out, though, a lot of stuff was happening in between. Like, like I started making more music. I started getting with... Uh, Mr. D from Southland, and you know, we started, I started, like I, with, through him, I put out a couple of things. So when I went ah. to prison and I was in the county, you know, it started being exposed, ah. so to speak. Yeah, you know. I see. But I didn't really put it out there being in there, like, hey, what's up, I'm Casper, I'm a rapper. You know, I was like, I'll leave that shit alone. Like, oh, I'm, yes. I'm just trying to program in here and try to focus and, yes. you know, get through this shit, you know. Well, you know, I didn't do no hard time. Like, I didn't go, like, I was eight years. I, I did it on a level three. Okay. The first prison I went to, all bad. Uh, Why? That was CSP Solano up north. Homies were short up there. There was northerners up there. And I don't know what's going on today with that. But at that time, it was all bad. You know, I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of a different situation now. Mm -hmm. But at that time, we were beefing big, like always in a... So it was just like, it, it was already known. There was a homie from Pomona. I think his name was Block. And we were all shackled up. And he, wasn't, he was like a second or third termer. And he was like, hey, fool, you know where we're going? And I was like, it said SOL. Can you say it? <laughs> yeah, he's, it said SOL on my bag. I thought Solidad. I never heard of Solano. And I'm like, Solidad? He's like, nah, bro. He's like, we're going to Solano. It's cracking with the northerners up there. He's like, as soon as you get off the bus, right? And he was sitting behind me, right? So I'm like, oh, actually, that was from reception, though. I went to Wasco, and then from Wasco, when we were going up, that's what he was telling me. Like, what's up, homie? We introduced ourselves, whatever. And he's like, yeah. He's like, it's cracking up there right now, bro, from my understanding. He's like, there's no structure, just a bunch of first-term young homies right. acting a fool, running amok. He's like, but it's cracking. So. I'm like, all right, well, f it is what it is, you know? So we're on our way up there, you know, those long ass drives. So we're on the bus and the whole time behind me, uh, the Tupac song, I Can't Deny It, I'm a Straight Rider. It was on. He kept, no, he kept fucking like humming the melody behind me in my ear. He'd be like, doom, 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 doom. Oh, doom. shit, like, yes, he, yes. He's, he's like. Pumping you yeah, up. Yeah, and he's like, you ready, fool, you ready? And I'm like, it is what it is, homie, let's get it. So as soon as we got off the bus, they, like, there was like three different buses and we went in and they separated us to two different yards. I went into my block. I didn't know shit from shit first term, only term. Um, I went in there and uh, I was like, I don't, if you don't know who to talk to, don't talk to nobody at all, you know what I'm saying? So I just went in and then they put me in a cell with a cat that just got there too, so we don't know shit. shit yeah. You know, and we're in a block, people are passing by, and then finally someone came up to our cell. I was like, it's northerner, southerner? We're like, south siders, all right. Bam, then we got a little kite. Let us know to get down. Uh -huh. Don't trip, you know, what it is and all that shit. But uh, yeah, so from there, my first, uh, it was all bad from day one. We were on lockdown, we were barely coming out from modified program. So we came out, we get to introduce ourselves, meet the homies, uh, submit your papers, you know what I mean? So do all that, we're good. Let us know to get down a little more. 
all right, we're going to be coming out for yard in, uh, uh, I think, two more day rooms, and then we'll be able to come out for yard. So I think another week we were coming out. So they let us out one time to go to the yard so we could, I guess, you know, it was the first time I heard of a Mac rep. So this Mac rep was one of the homies, and uh, they, bring, they let us all go out to the yard so the Mac rep could break it down to us what's going on. Everyone else was on lockdown. They let all us the out. All the new guys? No, just everybody, all mainline. Okay. They let, kept them in their cells for night yard, and they let us all, I guess these guys had been on lockdown for about six months when I got there. They were barely coming off okay. from the riots. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get out there, and I start seeing homies, and I'm like, damn. So we were only about 50 deep on that yard. But when you were together, you felt like, mm -hmm. I feel 50 strong right here. Like, feel you could take on the world with that, you know? Yeah. And uh, dude was breaking it down to us, talking about um, what it is. We're going to be coming out and whatnot. And uh, so I got to see more people meet. It was just a bunch of young homies, first termers mainly, that were out there. And uh, we go back to our cells. And then the first day I actually came out for yard, I got into an altercation. It went down. And uh, I actually got cut up my side and my back. Oh, I, yeah. I could see your scar. Yeah, it's a scar. It was, it's, it's, it was years ago, so now it's low, but it was here, the back of my neck, and then Your like, first time out in the yard, you got First stabbed. day out on the yard, got sliced up. <gasps> By a northerner. Right. How did you feel? Like inside your heart, like, you're like, once you felt like well, the- Well, actually, it was a, it wasn't, it was, it was our own backyard. It was dealing with something there. Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? So it was a it was a cleanup situation that went bad on someone else's behalf. You were just the one that I took just got caught up in it because it was my car. You know that yes. goes. You know, so we get there, it's like, hey, who's from this area? This is what's going on, this needs to happen. And it's your first time. So I was like, so for me, I'm coming from the county, I'm like, okay, this is what it is, it's going down. I'm like, so what's up? Where's it at? What do we gotta do? They're like, nah, you just gotta get him out of here. He needs a report. So on my head, I'm like, oh, that's a free one right there. I'm just gonna, just a little knuckle up real quick. But, but what them people didn't say is that yeah. so there was an attempt on that already. So homeboy was ready. This was the second attempt. Uh, so here I come, like, and you, and you gotta get him before he hits the block too. And it was in line. Hurry up, go, go, go. So he was like, it was me and someone else. We gotta do what we gotta do. And I went out there. And uh, homeboy was kind of slow dragging on me. Come to find out he was a little uh, hesitant because he was a two striker, the, the dude mm -hmm. going with me. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, homie, you got to speed up. But I, I didn't want to turn around and wait for him. Of course. You know, so I was like, mm, whatever. I went and did my thing and soon tapped him on the back and bam, we started going at it. Yard went down, all this shit. And uh, homeboy finally pulls up and drop kicks this fool, slams him on the ground. And it just seemed like slow motion to me when that happened. I was like, oh, shit. And they both fell to the ground. But when I did that, I, like from my eye, I saw and I looked and I was just fucking That's leaking. what probably made you like get discombobulated. Yeah, and, and I was like. Forgot to even fight. You're just more focused on your blood. Yeah, so that, that happened and they fell on the floor. And as I'm looking, the dude's getting back up, right? The alarm's off and all that. And when I saw that, I just felt this rush of anger in me like motherfucker cut me so i started chasing him and he's running towards the middle of the yard now this dude this fool had an e number he was an og dude wasn't small so he wasn't running from me because he was scared of me i was a little he wanted you to get shot by the he didn't he he might have thought i had something on me uh, right he don't want to get hit so he started running and i start chasing him and i'm like turn around you know, the, the, the program offices, they were way out. So they're still coming, though. He's running, kind of slanting through the yard. And I'm chasing him. And I tell him, turn around, motherfucker. I don't got nothing. And when I, when I said that, he kind of seen and he turned around. And again, we went at it again. But, you know, he's bigger than me. So he, he fuck, I just remember knuckling up with him maybe for about a couple of seconds. And he dropped me. Bam. And then he tried to jump on me. When he went to jump on me, I did that little kid move you did when you were younger. I was like, <laughs> You know, threw him over me and shit. And I got up before him and I took one more swing on him. And I just remember, bam, getting just like tackled. By the cops. <laughs> yeah. And sprayed. And uh, that was it from there.
And then I went to the back, and I was like, dude, I was only out there for a day? And, you know, um, and I was like, I was just so confused. Because you're like trying to adjust to this new program. You don't know what. Nobody they, around you knows. Everybody's just doing whatever somebody else tells you to do. Because if you don't, then that's your ass. And it was the program. You know, you get, uh, you get programmed for that. You tend, like, you get to believing in it. You know what I mean? Because you just adapt to it. And that's mm -hmm. just what it is. That's the game, right? So it's like, okay, your number's up. And to me, I thought, oh, this is an easy one. Because I could do that, come back, and then I could order my TV. I could do all this shit, right? Because I already ran my turn. It's your turn, fool. I'm waiting for my TV. Because fools would get, fuck, I ordered my TV. Now I'm in the hole. Are they going to send it back? Uh, you know, everyone's worried about saying. that shit. Yes. So me, I was like, I'm going to run this real quick, do a little 30-day dry out in the f back, come back, and I get to order all my shit now. And that's when the packages were coming from home. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, get my 5 old wheezies on, you know, <laughs> do all that. So uh, I, was, I was like, damn. So now I'm in there, and they put the dude next to me. And I remember uh, that prison had a lot of PCs in there. I remember walking in and I, I was all bandaged up and you could just hear shit. They ripped your fucking face off. And you know, them fools scream on the doors and shit. You know, we don't get down like that. You know, we walk in there and just, I didn't just stay quiet and put me in a cage. They put me in a cell and they put that dude next to me. You were able to see him? Through the vent. So he starts calling me, hey youngster, whoa, whoa, whoa jumped up on the toilet and I'm like, sup homie, what's up with all this? And he's the one that told me, you don't even know what you got involved in. He said, they tried to get me earlier and he showed me something on his neck. He's like, but they failed, little weak ass attempt. He said, you up. I'm gonna put you on one. And with everybody else on that yard that was involved in that, you guys I'm so-and-so, like that. But remember, this prison, there was a couple of undercovers there. There was, you know, it was a bunch of youngsters, first-termers. They didn't know better. There was fools there that knew that, and they were playing the role. They wanted to remove people. Yeah, and they wanted to be on mainline. And they were, they were sliding, they were like, you know, uh, some of them were dropouts and shit sliding through the cracks, being there, nobody knowing. Well, what we didn't know was on the other yard that I picked up on that, threw him on this side, you know. Anyway, so he's telling me wow. I f***ed up, that I'm done. But I told him, hey, homie, like, I'm just doing what's expected of us to do. And if you're a real one, you'll f know that. And you won't put me on shit. That's why motherfuckers don't want to move like that. Because you must be crossing fools up. That's just part of the program. You know what it is? That's all. I was just doing what's expected for, of me. Without asking questions. Without asking questions, homie. Because I, I'm representing some mouse in here, too. I got a nine letters on my back that I got to hold up. You know, you believe in that shit. Yes. You know, it is what it is. You know, but, you know, and, and so I said, I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm not, trying, I'm not in here trying to establish anything. I'm just with that group activity, bro. That's it. Like, I'm on that other shit, I'm cool. It just it came up, and this is what needed to be done. Now all this shit happened. Now it's like more and, chaotic. And, and you know what I mean? And we're talking to Van and he's, I don't know, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, well, like I said, if, if, if you're a real one and you know what it is, then you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about and you won't put me on shit. If you are, if you're not, I don't know. I really don't give a fuck. That's not my beef. You know, that's whatever. But uh, I guess in the process when I was in there, you know, obviously I go in, what happened? I told him I cut myself shaving. Get the fuck out of here. You know, they don't want to hear it. Yeah. So, uh, um, there was a lot of messages forth. getting back and forth. You know, I was getting blessed with stuff, you know, and I was just like, I don't want it. It's cool. What I did was just for the cause. Like, I'm not trying to establish no relationship with nobody uh, uh, on the yard or anything, you know. Uh, so that's just, that was just on the house, I guess. But, um, which I was glad because, like, all that whole situation, they, everyone just got up in a whirlpool in that. Yeah. So I, I went right through that, you know, just because I was just like, bam. Yeah. So, but the, the homeboy was just all bad anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, that's on you. So everything came out in time. The, Would you say that was the like dude the... That, the dude that uh, had that all set up, mm -hmm. he got in trouble. For doing that. For doing that to me. 
you know, not because of me, but just because of Setting the situation. Setting you up as a young, as a youngster, yeah. just walking in and not actually telling. Yeah, because other people started speaking up on him. He was kind of doing raw shit like that, mm -hmm. funny the, shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So they all got caught up and they were cleaning it's house. Usually how it works, right? right? I guess, yeah. It was so, anything in general, like anything, yeah. you know. So I think I spent like, I spent about six or seven months back there, and they let me out. And what did you do in those six, seven months? Read. Just read. Work, Work out. out. They gave us a little yard. Like, we got to get out there on the little yard with the homies and shit. There was a shower out there, just cold water, uh, a bat, half court. It was like a half court all caged in. Mm -hmm. And it was just crazy. You had, like, at that time, there was no structure there. There was nothing going on there. So it was just a, but when it came down for us to get busy, it was like you seen the love all the homies got together. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because there was a lot of beefing out there. Was that the only prison you were in? No, nah, after that, I, I went to the yard and I was only out there for a month. And uh, I was programming, I was starting to get my stuff. I was like, hell yeah, I got a couple visits, seen my kid, you know what I mean? I had a little daughter and uh, I was like, shit. And then uh, someone, a little, another altercation, someone got cut up on the yard. And so I went back to the back. And then I was back there uh, for, an additional like eight, nine months. And I was like, F and they couldn't, they couldn't get nothing. So I got sent back out to the yard. And then after that, a riot kicked off. And then we got on lockdown. And then they, the CO straight set us up, man, because on the yard, when it was time for yard, they let out the two races that were, they said, everyone else is on lockdown. These two races are coming out. So they were doing it on purpose. It's like setting it up. So they knew it was on site. So as soon as our gates racked and we were short, as uh -huh. soon as our gates racked, it was on and cracking. That is so terrible. they moved. So we were going at it at that time with the woods. And they were deep as fuck in there. And we're, that's usually our ally. Happened over a soccer game. A homie in a wood, getting into it, you know. What prison was this at? Solano. And we were short. We were only like 50 deep because of the situation. We were always going at it. The Northerners, they had a cold little tactic. They would send three into, a, into our side of the, the, of the yard. And of course, like dumbasses, we would all jump. So for three to five getting taken of them, it'd be like 15 to 20 of us getting took. Uh, so they ran the numbers like that, you know? So now we were short as hell. So, you know, it was like, well, what do you want to do? We're 200 and something deep on this yard. You want to act up? That's the way they thought it was. So we were going at it up there like that. And uh, I remember it was over a soccer game. One of the homies got called out of his name, didn't do nothing. He had a homie there that just came from a level four, didn't tolerate that kind of shit. I even, I didn't know this. I'm working, working in the kitchen in the back. I'm coming home just trying to bring some bell peppers and onions <laughs> back to try to get a couple of soups and shit. And uh, when, I, when we got back, we went, to, we went to Chow and I came back in to the cell. And uh, when I came in, you, you, you wait for everybody because we're so short. So when we all come in, we all wait, look around. Okay, everyone's there. Go inside, lock the door. Well, I had closed the door a little bit because I had to do something, and uh, my Sally stood outside, and the, and then the alarm went down, the yard was down. We're like, what the? F what happened? Everyone's looking around, and there was a wood sitting on the f bench, and he was just leaking, but he was sitting on the table, just like, I think he even smoked a cigarette, but they were still smoking back oh, then. Oh wow! So he's just like, and he's just fucking enjoying his last cigarette. Yeah, and uh. <sighs> We didn't know who did it, so we went on lockdown. We're like, oh, we're going to come out right now. They're going to figure it out. It wasn't us, but I guess it was us. It was the homie's homie that just came down. Mm -hmm. He asked for permission. They told him no, but he said, we don't get down like that. I don't know who, like, I don't know. I wasn't there for the conversation, but what I heard after was like, yeah, homeboy said, hey, I'm going to handle this. And they said, nah, man, like, your homie didn't jump. He was supposed to jump first. Right then if and then. He didn't jump, but he's like, nope, you're fucking up. Nobody, nobody does that. You're not gonna, you know, nah, what happens from there, right? So I wasn't part of that conversation I heard after, but then, so now we're like, well, what the f happened? So then 
finally came down the pipeline, got the message like, hey, that, that's what happened, it was us. I'm like, oh. So, you know, inside the pen, even if they're not part of that, that group, there's a still a wood, like the people that worked in the offices and stuff, it's just the normal cats that are in yes. prison, the regulars are the others, but they're still woods. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were moving people around. So they moved two youngsters next to us, me and my Sally, and we knew why they did that. So I was like, dude, they're, they're right here. They're for us, I was telling my Sally. So when they said it was time for us to come out, we already knew what time it was. Yeah. And since it was so off guard, uh, we were empty handed. So I t and I was getting into some college courses in there, just trying to keep busy. And uh, the dude was giving me my books, right, at, under the door. And I'm looking, and I'm seeing the CEOs uh, coming in, getting ready. Like, they got canisters. They're ready for all riot gear. And I knew it. I was like, they're going to let us out right now. So they said they were going to let out a building. They weren't saying who first. And, and I was like, dude, we're going to get up early and be ready in case it's us. So we were ready. And my luck, they opened up our side. Yeah. Because so, apparently you don't have no luck. Yeah. <laughs> At that, yeah, which is good, right? Because you get tired of it. But so for that, I was like, man, I told my Sally, F that. we're going to run up in these full cells because I know they're packing now. I'm not going to let them out of their cell and be able to be in the open area. Yes. So I told him, fool, when they crack these gates, it's on and cracking. He's like, all right. So we were ready. I'm talking about suited and booted, f f foot up from, to the neck, jacket on, the jean jacket, the whole works. We even had the paños that were hanging from the lockers. I took that shit off. I put that shit around my face, and they said, yard open, starting from B side or whatever side I was on. I was like the fourth door down. These fools were before me. When they cracked my door, I racked that shit open, and I ran around, my Sally following me, and I caught them dudes off guard. Like, they were ready, too. And, and his door was, he was, had already opened it, and I just ran in, and I grabbed him and pushed him, and his Sally was behind him. I pushed them all the way back to the desk, and we just started, and my Sally was helping me. He was pushing me, pushed them, and we just got up in their cell, and we were scuffling in there. And the dude was trying to hit us, but he was behind his Sally. So he was trying to reach over his Sally, and he was getting me on my arms, but I was so thick with the... With the clothes. Like, it was just like, like Charlie horses on my shit. You know what I mean? So we did that, and I ran out, we ran out the cell, and I went to slam it closed, like lock these fools up. And I ran out because we had a homie that was downstairs and he would, he, he would ride us, send us little kites and be like, hey fool, I'm down here all by myself. You guys gonna make it down here? Oh and I my tell him, God. we'll be right there. We'll be, we'll get, we'll make it down there fool, don't even trip. And uh, so after that scuffle, we came out, I tried to close the door and uh, but I guess when I slammed it, it slammed so hard, it just bounced back. <gasps> but I remember when I came out, the, came out the tier, I remember looking to my right, and there was homies coming out of their cell, straight, just in slingshots and shorts. And they were like, they were slipping. They weren't even ready. And when I slammed that door, this cat came out. I ran downstairs to go help the other homie. And sure enough, like he had, he, yeah. he, he's a big dude though. Like he's he was a, ready. So he was, he had about maybe four of them on him. Him and his Sally, it was two other Sal's on him. And me and my Sally ran in and got involved on that one. But what I didn't know is the, the homies I seen come out the cell, the dudes we were with, well, they ended up coming out and they ended up whacking homeboy. So he ended up getting hit, but he was a big dude. So they said, you're lucky if, if, if you didn't have that thick skin on you, you would have punctured a lung because they wow. got him pretty good. You guys do really go through a lot, like you men in there. It's sad that it's just the way it is, yeah. unfortunately. And you know, you guys come out, come out and have to adjust to this world that it's nothing like that. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously it is, but it's not. And you have to like be a different person that you were oh, yeah. in there from like one minute to another. And like, yeah. how can you forget like everything that you- All the ingenious little things you learn to hide there. shit yeah, and all this yeah, crazy shit, yeah. yeah. And the, yeah, just institutionalized after that. Yeah, because 
You know, and then me and my Sally were like, we're tired of this pin. I'm trying to catch a train to down south. So that was our ticket. So it was like, I, as I was running to the homie, he was from, from Gage, uh, my homie, good friend of mine still. And, uh, and uh, I remember going to him and the CO's running. So I'm like, I got to get in there before they get, get in there because that's my ticket out of here. And we made it and we just started going at it. And they were shooting the block guns at us. And one of the dudes got shot in the eye. They, they, uh, they got it, it ricocheted off the doors because we were facing the doors away, our back to the tower. And but they were shooting and they come in little three packs. Pah, and, they, oh. and it bounced off and got somebody and popped their eye out of their shit. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, all bandaged up. And we were all covered up, right? So when it was said and done, because, uh, you know, you got to just keep going until you, until you can't. So we would just keep going, get down, get down, boom, 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 blasting, doing all this shit. So finally we're laid out and everyone's all in shirts and shit. We're all covered up. The only things that they got me on was my hands and my eyes. And your eyes, believe it or not, it hurts the most. But it, I just remember they were like, uh, it was funny because they were just like, get the bank robbers. Because we were all, hmm. we were the only ones really ready at that moment. I don't know what happened with that, but that was our ticket down south. So we went to the hole, stood in there for a minute. You know what I mean? And then from there, we went to Ironwood. That's when I went to Ironwood. And then from there, like, my last three and a half, four years was just cool. Smooth. smooth. Like, real smooth. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, from there, you know, in between, yeah, like, the stuff, the stuff that you were talking about, yeah, you just learn all kinds of stuff. Because I was in there, you know, making white lightning. You know what I mean? And and doing just stuff chilling. like that, just tripping out on some of the stuff that these guys come up with. Yeah. You know, in Ironwood, I got to witness like the jailhouse electrician. You know, you get these radios there. These fools are hooking them up to be surround sounds for your TV and hook up other speakers to them. The fools got full blown sound systems in their cell, oh, bumping wow. with the super twos on the bottom of the lockers. My, our cell straight sounded like a Cadillac. That matter of fact, we think we used to call it the Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, in Ironwood, it was, it, I mean, it was I a got different there. Experience. It was a different experience. Do it was still. Like, it, do you feel like it was more obviously? I feel like right now what you said, Solano, Sol Solano, right? Yeah. It was more like no kind of love whatsoever there. Everything was just. It was cold. just a, on my end. Yeah, I don't know yeah, whose experience else, for everyone yeah. else, but it was just all bad from the gate for and me. And Ironwood was a little bit more like. Relaxing. More relaxed. You. Even it, though it was still going on in there. But just not. For you. Not for me. When I got there, it was actually the opposite. Like one of my homies was there already, was situated. You know, we had things going on in there, so it was just, it was like whatever you wanted, we had it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was just a whole other program in there. There was still a lot of stuff going on, but Obviously. it was on, a, it was on a, a, a level that I didn't have to get involved in. Good. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't really with the, those house politics mm -hmm. and stuff. So you know, it was just, you know, it was with that group activity. You know got I mean? it, got it. And it really is a big difference. Yeah. It is a big difference. Yep. Um, how long have you been out now? That was, I came home in 2007. Oh, you've been out for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. Because I, I did went a, in 2008. Yeah, I did a violation. Just a quick little 30 days, went in there and got released. And that was it. And that was it. That's when you see like the whole difference of what's going on in there. And maybe for that crowd, it's for them. But for me, it was just different. Now I know when I was younger, how these older cats used to look at you, and you know they're looking at you like, you stupid mother Yes. I, I witnessed you, that at that time. Do you feel like back. you needed that violation really quick just to? Just to get a little glimpse of what's uh -huh. going on? Yeah, but, and it's crazy because when I came home, it still didn't stop me. I got caught up in, in still the, the whirlpool of being from where I'm from and with homies and stuff. And then it was a whole different level when I came home. It was done. You know, everyone that was on nickel and dimes was, done stepped up way up and it was like, whoa, and it was a whole different ball game, but it was still active, but just on another level. Wasn't yes. hanging around at the park, at the street corners now. Everyone's mobile. Everyone's pulling up to places, meet here, meet there, do this, do that. More you money, know. stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of different stuff involved. And in, in, uh, I started finding myself doing that, but at the same time, it was weird because I came, you know, I have a lot of solid homies that they, it was weird because they were living double lives. Like they would have a job and they still been involved and they had a home and they had their kids and stuff, but they were still young, but they were holding that shit down. 
You know, even just like my brother-in-law, I talk about him a lot because he, he's, he's one of the main influence that raised me. And even though he was like, look, you're going to be this, this is the way you need to That's be. Right. If That's you're going right. to be, because he was a fool. I'll tell you, like, he was just, uh, people know who he is. They already know. But, but it was like, I looked up to him because even though as much as he was a fool in that situation, in that game, in at the same time, he held down his house. He provided for my sister. He was going to East LA College, you know, like just on other classes, and and I looked up to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think I got that from him. He's the one that kind of showed me, like, he was like you your know, father figure. When you thought of hustling back then, when I was small, I thought only like, like just all oh, dope dealers, drugs, and hustling. No. This fool would f on and hustle some diapers. Anything. Anything. Like he would get a pallet of diapers and flip that. Yeah. Whatever came through, like you got a, everyone needs diapers. Let me get what you got. Let me get a pallet. Boom, and you'll. Now he's slanging diapers. This dude would slang everything. You know what I mean? And, and that's that's gave me that. That's what gave me that hustle in me, even in a legit way. You know what I mean? But you know, it, at the same time, when I was in Ironwood, I got an opportunity to go to the to the uh, I forgot what it's called, but you, you know, you go to classes in the back, and they put me onto air conditioning. Mm. And when I got put onto that, um, I was I just like. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to check it. it out. Yeah, I liked it for some reason. And, I, and in there, um, I, I was able to get a book into my cell. And we were on lockdowns in there, too, right? And I read that whole mechanical book in there. And I even answered all the questions in the back. You know what I mean? And I, I didn't have nothing on lockdowns. Like, do all that. Well learned, and my yeah. Sally trips out because he he, I know him today. And he said, fool, that's crazy. You knew what you were going to do. So almost, is that what you do now? That's what I do now. Oh, well, good for you. Yeah, I went through, uh, uh, I, you know, luckily nothing happened when I came home seriously, seriously enough for me to get caught up again. Because God knows I was doing stupid shit still. Yeah. But at the time, you don't think it's stupid. It's what you believe in. Mm -hmm. You know, and things were happening. And a lot of people, a lot of my close homies, like, they passed away. Been to a lot of funerals and... You know what I'm saying? And, and just stuff like that. And as you're getting older, like, it just by luck so happened to be that I was a, still out here to say, I didn't even remember a day where I said, I'm changing. It just slowly I, started happening. It's like, I don't want to be that person for my youngins. I think that's you know exactly what I mean? how it happens. Having kids. And, you know, I, was, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I'm just trying to correct them now. And, and, and steadily I beat myself up in my head of, how I'm, how I'm performing out here and what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do and whatnot. And I'm on, I'm on the late train as far as that field goes, you know, like I did. So when I came home, I, I, I for a while still, then I, I said, I went to like a little trade tech school and uh, out there like in, in, a, in the Harbor area somewhere. Um, I went to a school called Wild Tech for like two years. No, for about a year, it was a little crash course, but that led me on to the union. So then I went union and I tried to get in. It took me a couple of years to get in because I was still acting up. Mm -hmm. But when I got in, that program requires so much time from you because you work and go to school that it's either one or the other. Yeah. And I wanted money and I'm, and I'm, I just know like slanging, has, that's a dead end no matter which way you think about it. Either yep. or it's not for me. It was never my thing. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I wasn't doing the banging thing anymore. I wanted stuff for my family, for, you know, my mom, my kids, yeah. you know, uh, had a relationship in the past. And, you know, so I just, I don't know what happened. It just transformed. And now yeah. my, my, my perspective on things now is a whole lot different now. That's right. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but even back then, though, when I got in, I didn't really wish that on anybody else. Like, it was hard for me to jump other cats in. You know, like homies, like, hey, this fool wants to get in. Like, but I knew they didn't want to. They were wanted to push it on them. That's bad. It's bad when you have to do that because yeah. that's always a bad turnout at the end. It is, and it happens. All so, all and, I, I, and, and I was like, homie don't want to get in, fool. I'm not going to get anybody in that don't want to get in. You got to want this shit. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. So I was like, nah, it's it ain't. It's not for everybody. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's just, it's a trip. So now, you know, I, that's what I do now. So I'm in my career pretty deep, pretty good, good at you. it. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations. Thanks. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm married now. And uh, it's a Brady Bunch household. You know, two different families come together as one. And oh. it ain't easy. 
but you know what I'm saying? But we live out in Riverside now and uh, we got ourselves a home. Good for you. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's, I'm struggling to, on my end to keep that up, but it's a good struggle, I guess. That's right. We struggled way worse. Yeah. We struggled way worse and we were still able to get out. So. Yeah, because I, oh, sorry, go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I'll say I have bad days and then I'll f on and think about other stuff and I'm like, what am I tripping on? I had a bad day this morning. Really? And then I was like, what am I f on? Like, it's okay. You woke up cranky. But you know, be all right. I, I think that life is set up like that to have us like that. You know, the program, the system, it's like they keep you and, and you end up taking it out on maybe your partner. I've been guilty of that and been checked on that. And I got to go and step away, fire one up and get in my little zone. And I, that's when I could see shit. And I'm like, dude, that was wrong. You know what I mean? And, you know, shit like that. And uh, I just trip out um, and reflect. I always reflect. It's the best thing that we are, we are so blessed to be able to have a chance to reflect. Yeah. Yeah. And I do now all the time. And it's funny because even sometimes I'll get caught up telling my wife a little war story. It'll be something so minor that re will remind me of a situation. And, uh, you know, and I'll go into detail and tell her. And I'm like, never mind. <laughs> Once but in a while, I'll you. catch her and she'll be like, and what happened? And I'll be like, oh, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it was pretty crazy, too. My sister and my uncle being from White Fence and going through that, like, like you know. Oh, your sister I, was all you had, Yeah, basically. and I would use her car a lot to go to my neighborhood. Oh, she And, you know, I'd just park it and I would roam around, but not knowing that people were seeing it there. Yeah. And I remember getting shot up in that car from her own homeboys. <laughs> That so I get terrible. home and cars all full of bullet holes. My mom's kicking me. What? The Look at the car. Your sister. My sister's like, shot at you. I'm like, your You're homies. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, of course, you know, the, the return the favor part. But, you know, she just was like, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to yeah. know nothing. You well, know. is there anything else you would want to share before we close? Yeah, I would say that, you know, we talk about this lifestyle and music too. You know, we glorify it and sometimes I'm guilty of that too, but it's really not what it's all made out to be. At the end of the day, like coming home to my family, you know, and I wish I had somebody there. And even though a lot of people do, you're not gonna be able to stop them, but it, it's, it's just like, uh, it ain't the business. You know what I mean? And I wish I would have learned that before because now, I'm where I'm at now, and I'm like, I wasted so much time because I went all the way to the bottom and caught up a little bit to where I'm at now, but I could imagine if I would have had known that, had the mentality that I do now back then, who knows where I would have been. And I don't know, you know, sometimes it's guidance. I didn't have no guidance growing up, and I got a lot of love from my brother-in-law, and he guided me only depending on what I was already in. You know, so it's not nothing he did wrong. No, it's what we knew as a family, you know what I'm saying? And it's more like, well, you're going to be out there. Might you be. might as well be packing. I'm not going to, I don't want to get a call saying you're dead. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get a call saying you're in jail. Yeah. You know, and that's to them. And to me, I'm like, I don't really know if I want to be in jail, though. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, dad, yeah. after spending that, you know, eight years in there, I don't know if I want to be a lifer in there. No disrespect to the lifers that are no, already no, in no, there, not, you know no. what I mean? I ran across a lot of them, and I have a lot of love. A lot of, a lot of people know me in there, you know. We were just blessed with the opportunity to come home and make it better. And make it better, and I don't know where it happened, but I've always wanted better, but I just couldn't stop. No. It was like a disease. It was like a... It is. You know what I mean? That, that feeling, and, and you know, I, I have a lot of family that, uh, that are, I mean, even close friends, and they, they're the same. They turn their lives around, and... It's like the way they were getting it in that lifestyle, they're okay. still getting it, but they're fortunate enough to be here to get it yes. now. And that's what I say. I got a 19-year-old apprentice that works with me, and I tell him every day, you're so much ahead of the game right now, bro. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, you, you tripped me out. You, you are destined for a good future right now. You're 19 years, I, I got in this trade at 38, 39 years old. You know what I mean? And, and look at where you're at now, 19, and the way he talks to me where his, 
where his mentality is. And I just always commend him for that. Like, dude, you're That's sharp. Right. That's good. You're thinking the way you are. That's what I would say to, you know, the youngins out there today. Yes. Like, you know, I know it's cool talking about, you know, what, the lifestyle we live and it's, and it's, and it's like, we're caught up in that. I know so I'm guilty of doing it myself, like I said, but if you want to talk to me on the up and up in reality, like I want to be taken seriously on a respectful level, That's right. on a mature level and know that I could hold my own in any kind of conversation That's right. around amongst any kind Everybody. of people in my company, talking to other contractors. Now, you know, the lifestyle I talked about, that was the old me, mm -hmm. you know, and I, like I said, I got an opportunity and just not to give up, nobody give up out there and, and find that, find that, uh, Find that guide, find that yeah. guidance, find that yes. mentor. You know, you are who you hang with. Mm. So take a look around. You know, you're hanging around those cats. That's what you're destined for. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and half the fools that talk about what they're doing on the mic anyways, probably ain't really doing it. They're just talking about it on the mic. <laughs> Maybe what their homies are doing. Or you might carry one and it might give you the, the, the feeling to talk about that lifestyle. It's just like, yeah, you carry one, but do you really want to use it? Do you, want, yeah, do you exactly. really want that? Mm -hmm. Because it's like that. And all that little fame and fortune is gone. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. All right. So well, that's it. Thank you for being on Indicted TV. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.